you know the definition of underdog, then you know the position UMass Lowell finds itself in today. In the midst of a rebuilding year, they take on their fiercest rival, Plymouth State College, who is off to a roaring start. Coming off dominating performances in their first two games, the Panthers have clawed their way to the top spot in the ECAC New England Top 20 rankings. But this series has not always gone by the book. The answer to today's question, can Lowell knock off the top-rated Panthers, lies on the ground. PSC comes in with a powerful running game led by the tailback platoon of David Bowman and Sean Redburn, who average 200 yards a game rushing between them. The newly christened Riverhawks will have to stifle the punishing Panther attack with their own ground game, which leads the Freedom Football Conference in total rushing yards. Jason Harris and Dana Maxwell, who have run for five yards a carry in 94, go up against one of the best linebackers scores in New England in their attempt to control the clock and the game on the ground. Will the Riverhawks run through it? We'll find out today on Sports Channel. The ECAC Game of the Week is brought to you by the Chevy dealers in New England. Start where more people end up. And by the Spalding Top Flight J5V, the offensive weapon. From Courier Memorial Field, it's the ECAC Game of the Week on Sports Channel. Hi, everybody. I'm Scott Tranch Montaigne, along with Dave Long. We've got Freedom Football Conference action today between the Panthers from Plymouth State and the River Hawks from UMass Lowell. And Dave, you look at this one on paper, and the big edge goes to Plymouth. It does go to Plymouth. They've had one common opponent between them, Norwich University. Plymouth beat them by 23 points, 40-17, and uh, Lowell was shut out in the game against the Cadets. So on paper, right off the bat, it does look like that. But you have to remember, Scott, these two teams are old rivals, and they've played for the last eight years and had some great games that I've seen during that time. So even though Lowell's a little bit down, they're very young, they've graduated a lot of players, I would expect there's those little intangibles that gives them a shot at having to make it a, make it a better game. Well, what do the uh, Riverhawks need to do today to sneak out of here with a victory? I think the big thing is they really need to have a big edge in turnovers, maybe a three-plus in turnovers. They can't make mistakes. They can't give Plymouth very good field position. And in turn, they've got to get some of their own, fumbles, interceptions, those kind of things, where maybe they'll get, the, they'll get the field position and can take it in. What Lowell does have is a very good ground game. And if they can control the clock by moving the ball on the ground, they can keep it out of the Plymouth's hand, which has a very multi-dimensional offense, and uh, it'll give them the shot. Those are the two things, turnovers, ball control. When you want to talk about Plymouth strengths, you almost don't know where to start. Well, the interesting thing is they have great linebackers. They've got nine players coming back from the defense last year that was very stingy. Among those are the linebackers, Toby Cloutier, Colby Compton, Jeff Jarry. They played together for a long time, and I think that's the most interesting aspect of the game. Lowell's running game against Plymouth's defense led by the linebackers. On the other side of the ball, Plymouth very multi is multidimensional, as I mentioned, on offense. They can throw the ball deep, wide out. R.J. Latendre averaged about 22 yards a catch last year, and they've got tailbacks, David Bowman and uh, Sean Redburn, who are averaging between them 200 yards a game. So they really can move it both ways. It's foliage season, and it's homecoming here at Plymouth. Should be a big crowd. UMass Lowell hoping for a big game. We'll be back with the opening kickoff after this. Mr. Garrett. Oh, hi, Tommy. I'm changing my oil and air filters. What's W-I-X? That's Wix. Wix makes my filters. What are filters? Well, filters keep dirt out of my engine, and Wix filters are the best. Matter of fact, I had them on the car I uh, won the Daytona 500 in. I see my frog. Get your Wix filter at any SAS Santa Auto Parts store. <laughs> College football on Sports Channel. Brought to you by GMAC Financial Services. The Expressway Home. Something's wrong with my phone. Once, there was a small business owner who spent so much time managing his phone system, he fell behind in his other work. Then one day, he discovered new Centex Plus from 9X, and he switched to this affordable system designed just for small business. Now 9X takes care of his phone system, and our hero, well, the moral, call 1-800-PLUS now. Get Centrex Plus and get more time for the big picture.
Continental's One Pass enables you to earn free travel faster than any other frequent flyer program. Continental. It's more airline for your money. Milk, eggs... Honey, the game's on. Oh, great. All set for the kickoff here from Plymouth State University in wonderful Plymouth, New Hampshire. The Panthers have won the toss and have elected to receive. R.J. Latendre and Michael Demons are back to receive it. And the kick coming from uh, Ryan Noonan. It's a short kick. Loose ball at the 30. Then covered up, and the Panthers will start first and 10 from the 31-yard line. And uh, did the smart thing there. Didn't try to pick it up. Try just got on the ball. Panthers have pretty decent field position at the 31-yard line. You like to feel those, though, as quickly as you can or as cleanly as you can because that could have easily could have got to the 40. Would have been great field position to start. There's the Plymouth State offense. Joel Perry, the transfer from AIC. Kevin Hutchins and David Bowman, the tailback. Latendre and Dalton are the wide receivers. Doyle, Ziegler, Oregon, Drone, Sawicki, and Pagorni, a very veteran offensive line. Joel Perry, the quarterback, he's a junior, 6'2", 200 pounds. First and 10 from just outside his 30. Going to throw right away, looking downfield, plenty of time. Now he's flushed out of the pocket, and he's taken down from behind near the 34. Good job in the defensive secondary. Plymouth was trying to go to the right side of the field. They had the two guys in the left were going toward their, their own sideline. And uh, the defenders just shut them down. Andy Mariska made that tackle. There you see the Lowell defensive lineup. 95 Mariska was the one who chased down Perry that time. Still a pretty uh, decent gain for Perry. He got three yards out of it, so second and seven. On the ground. Here's Bowman. Pretty good push through the line up near the 40. You're not going to see a lot of fancy stuff with the Panthers, Scott. They pretty basic. They run the eye back. They have two wide outs. They have the tight end. And they just, with uh, everybody except for one player back in the interior line, which was very good, they just come right at you and try and win with basic football. David Bowman is a uh, junior on the team out of uh, Bedford, New Hampshire. I'm close. sorry, St. Petersburg, Florida. You were just close. around the corner. Just same seaboard, same uh, coastline. You were close. <laughs> <laughs> His backup, Sean Redburn, is out of Bedford, New Hampshire. Here's Bowman on third and two. He's got it. Nice job of picking his way through the crowd. Went a little right, went a little left. And uh, really just was kind of a seeing eye type of run. Nice job by Bowman. So the Panthers establishing a ground game early. I mean, they are averaging between Bowman and Sean Redburn, the Bedford, New Hampshire resident, who's established a little earlier. Uh, they're averaging about 200 yards a game on the ground. Redburn, the backup, had 158 yards last week. ECAC, one of the, on the ECAC honor roll. From the state with three receivers now. And Redburn in there in the uh, I formation. The 25-second clock. First penalty today. They had uh, Ronner and Redburn in the eye and three receivers, and uh, they never get the playoff. Bob McPherson, Ed Shannon, Tom Irabino, Lee Hatchins, and Scott Frazier working the game today. And we're looking at first and 15 for the Panthers. Early on in this one, no score from Plymouth. Perry to throw. He's complete to Latender. R.J. Latender. And he's up near midfield. R.J. going a little bit shorter, shorter pattern this year. As I mentioned, I think in the open, averaged about 22 yards a catch last year. A little bit more of a control type pattern. This year, he's got six catches for 86 yards coming in. And at that time, once again, pretty short out for about four yards. Second and six for the Panthers. Split out wide is Jack Dalton, the senior wide receiver. And Latender on the other side. Perry to throw again. Lots of time. Looking downfield. Receiver is wide open and just through the hands of uh, number 23, Matt LeBlanc. Threw it on the opposite side. LeBlanc looked like he had all day. Really was waiting for it. He had to come not only come back for it, but twist around. 
But uh, Perry just missed that one. And also there was some wide open receiver. I think it was a tight end in the middle, but I'll tell you what, the way they, they went man to man that time, they left a, a, a wide, I'm sorry, they went zone that time on a deep zone. And there's some open area about 15 yards in the middle of the field. We got third down and six from the 49 and Perry to throw again. Just gonna dump it off, it's batted away. He was trying to hit Bowman, but the pass never got there. Merska comes out of the right-hand side of your screen. There's a good shot of Perry, look at it. Right to the middle of your screen on the right-hand side. There goes the big paw from 95. He just beat with his quickness. Jeff Ziegler, first to sophomore tackle. He's the new guy in the unit. Perry, of course, on that play, decided to kind of throw the line drive rather than loft it because there was some room on that side for Bowman. Paul Descoli on the punts. Fielded at the 10. Big hit. Great coverage by Plymouth that time. And really no return to speak of. Colby Compton, the linebacker, doing double duty, playing in the special teams. Comes the hit. Colby says hello. Good hand. Look at the left hand on the ball. Nice job of holding on to the ball because that was a big hit. And... Uh, Colby goes for it. Mike St. Jean never had a chance to crank anything up on that return. And as such, his team starts first and 10 from their 15. Colby Compton, a first team all ECAC player last year in the defensive end. Dana Boudreaux, the quarterback for the River Hawks, on the keeper. Pretty decent yardage there. He busted up near the 24. He'll play the wing tee. They'll sometimes run with three people in the backfield, Scott. Other times, they'll have the wing back, Harris. He splits on either side of the field, and they like to run that option. Looked to me like that time. There's a look at the offense, but uh, Boudreaux looked like after he had the game, could have pitched it back, and Harris had some room to run farther downfield, so we'll have to keep an eye out for that. Again, the big runners are Harris and Maxwell. Second down and one, Maxwell on the pitch, and he's stuck for perhaps a loss. Maybe he got back to the line of scrimmage, but I don't think he's got the first down. Yeah, Derek Stone came up fast from the deep secondary. He's one of the guys who are returning. In fact, almost everybody is returning. As you can see the defense there. Only new guys on the field are uh, Chris McKean. Didn't see a lot of, the only guy who really hadn't seen much playing time last year. Andy Levine moved in, but he was in and out of the lineups a year ago. Played, started some, was the nickel back in other situations. The chains are out, and uh, they do not have the first down. They're short by, as you can see, a couple inches. Sports Channel tunes into 1.5 million homes across New England, and they would like to thank the Chevy dealers of New England and Sports They are going to set it up at about the 29-yard uh, line. I like the... Uh, I, I love watching option quarterbacks. To me, that's the most fun offense. And of course, you don't see it in the pro game. In college, I just think uh, when you have a great quarterback or a guy who really can run that option, there's so many there's so many uh, opportunities. First of all, for turnovers, make the game a little bit more exciting. But uh, it's like a point guard having a guy who can really pass the ball in basketball, play the middle, and drop it off. You never know where it's going to go, and there it gives you options to uh, obviously to change your play at midstream. So. It's third and a short one for the Riverhawks. Kayumjin and a Maxwell in the backfield, and they're trying to go straight ahead. I don't know, Dave, do you think they got it? Stacked I don't up. know, they're, calling, they're moving him ahead. Maxwell, Maxwell with a smart play. Not a lot of, uh, not a lot of uh, trickery there. He just went right over the top. Now Boudreaux following his uh, center, Ryan Noonan. And it was good for the first down. So the ball now on the 25-yard line. Riverhawks keep their drive alive. Again, nothing fancy. On the ground, up the middle. Trying to punch in over that Plymouth defense, which uh, will run. We had the three linemen. They got four linebackers, and they go with four people deep. And uh, once again, everybody on that front line for Plymouth has been there before. Morley Friedman. Actually, Seamus Mason is the other player when he plays up front is a, is a new player for the team. He was uh, not with the club last year. Don Tappan as well. Second down and nine. And on the option, Boudreaux's got some room. He's got the first down and more. There's a flag on the play as he's downed at the 45-yard line. 
Funny, those flags went down after Boudreaux was down. Watch this as he comes out of the replay. The fake is outstanding. No one knows that he has the ball. Everybody's concentrating on the guy in the middle. And he makes the nice cut back up the middle as well with a lot of running room. I think you're going to have a face mask call there. And McKean really was the last guy there. He prevented a touchdown. One of those inadvertent face masks. Just a five-yarder on Chris McKean. But UMass is moving the football. They're at midfield now with first and ten. And they shift up at the line. Straight through Kayumjin. Big man, six foot, 225 pounds. Nice job with the center. They just kind of punched a hole there and moved it up about five yards. Quick hitter. Key to that play, Scott, is how fast the, the uh, fullback can get off the ball. Kayumjin was right in that line immediately. There's a look at the Waltham Mass native. Four-yard pickup, so second and six. And Boudreaux again on the option, opts to keep, and picks up some yardage. That one's good for the first down. Once again, uh, he's doing a good job with the ball fakes because there was room on the outside. I think it was Maxwell who was trailing that play. And Boudreaux, made, of course, made a nice choice, kept the ball cut inside, took it up just short of that first down. But uh, there are some... The uh, wingman who's trailing that play is open. So uh, Plymouth has got to get some people over there and slow that down. Third and one. Looks like they've got it as Kiyumjin battled through the line, but some flags came in from the uh, back of the play. And when they come in from when they come in from the midfield judge or the when they come in from that area, that generally is offensive holding. Here's the replay. Quick hitter. Once again, Kamujin is there, picks up the first down, and he was there very quickly. I didn't really pick up the hole, but you saw the flag come flying through, and they always walk it off when it comes in from that direction against the offense. Oh, that takes him out of a real nice situation where they had picked up the first down on third and one. Now they're looking at third and 11 from back on their side of the field. And also puts them in a situation where they have to throw the football, and that is not their strength. We had mentioned earlier that the Riverhawks would have to play mistake-free, and that's the first one that we've seen that might end up costing them. Let's see, third and 13, they call it. Boudreaux's in trouble, and he's sacked. All kinds of pursuit. Seamus Mason was the man who took him down. Take a look at the D. I think the selection of the play, though, says more than the play itself. They go at... at Third and uh, third and 14, and they decide to keep it on the ground against the very tough offensive uh, defensive team. And nice job of turning the play inside, but by not passing the ball, I think that shows a lack of comp. Or my guess is that that shows a lack of confidence that they don't want to make a mistake in their end of the field. They'd rather punt and play the field position game. Now we got another flag on the play, and a false start on UMass will back them up even further. And uh, Eric Crowley will try again. Crowley, a sophomore punter. He's uh, standing now at his 26. Andy Levine back to return. Levine will gather it in at his 20. Curls back towards midfield. Now looking upfield. Not much there for Andy Levine. I'll tell you, if you saw that, he caught the ball and he caught it going over his shoulder, so he had to turn back in. And when he, when his vision came back on the, in the direction that he wanted to be or to go to his area, all he saw was white shirts or about seven white shirts coming after him. There's also a penalty flag in the backfield, Scott, on the play. Well, I was following the ball on the return. Did the uh, punter get hit, Dave? Yeah. I was worried about Levine and those white shirts coming <laughs> down after him. I didn't see it myself, but they are talking it over with Lowell. Even if it's a 15-yarder, I don't think they'll make, they're not going to make the first down. It was uh, for, fourth and 19. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and now it's a case of where the ball is at the 27. Are they going to move it up or and think they can do a better job or not? So it looks like they're going to they're, they're going to decline the penalty. Yeah, he definitely. Uh... Inadvertent the penalty there but I think you you mass at this point figures well we've got them down at their 26-yard uh, line might as well 
take our chances here rather than try to kick it again. Lowell, we should mention, very young ball team coming in 48 freshmen out of 60-odd players to start it off the season. So, you know, that's the other thing that goes along with mis mistake-free football. Generally, you don't see that with a young team. On the pitch, David Bowman rumbles his way for about five, six, maybe seven yards. Just banging away on the left-hand side of the line. Going over Ziegler and Horgan, the senior. 7.55 to play in this first quarter. No score here from Plymouth. The Mighty Panthers 2-0. Ranked number one coming in against the uh, Riverhawks. 0-3. Second and five. Perry back to Bowman. He's got the first down and more. Bowman at midfield. Just tripped up. Chris Burns made the last, got him on the shoestring. Otherwise, David Bowman was off to the run races, off to the end zone. But once again, they're just going away at that left side line. There's a good shot of Don Brown, second year coach. And his counterpart, Tom Radulski. Watch the hole. You could have blasted through that hole, Dave. Good block by the uh, fullback, Kevin Hutchins, who sealed the linebacker and created that opening. Once Bowman got through the line of scrimmage, he had a lot of room because the linebacker was sealed. On first down from the 48, about a two-yard pickup for Sean Redburn. Sean is a, a transfer from Colby College, came here this year. <laughs> Sophomore, injured a year ago, or injured, I, I believe, in the first game of the season, so uh, he got a, a medical red shirt, so he picks up that year of eligibility. He's got three years to play. As I said, uh, 158 yards on the ground off the bench last week. I don't see backup tailbacks do that very much, unless they play at Michigan. They have guys that do that uh, all the time. Hurry to throw, looking for Jack Dalton. He's got him. There's a flag on the play as Dalton is down at the 30. Quick out to Dalton. It was right there, and the coverage was pretty loose. I will tell you, big cushion there on the left-hand side, the left-hand side of Lowell's defense. They are clapping, so it looks like the penalty is going to go against Plymouth, an eligible receiver downfield but look at the cushion at the top right hand part of your screen Dalton goes out and watch when he catches the ball how far away the defender is you can't even see him about seven yards away there goes the penalty flag in but uh, you know obviously uh, obviously as you take a look at Jack from Andover Massachusetts they respect his ability to get deep but uh, they're gonna I tell you what they'll just pull up and play that short control passing game all the way down the field and just kill him because you can't give eight yards like that especially the guy who just catch the ball when they got a quarterback who can deliver. Dalton and Latender are split out on opposite sides again, and uh, Matt LeBlanc also. Cornerbacks, cornerbacks are 10 yards off the ball. Perry to throw, again, all kinds of time, right across the middle, and he just overthrew Dalton. He was thrown into coverage as well. Yeah, coaching staff must have seen that opening, so they went back at it. First two, the first two times they threw the ball, there was that opening in the middle of the field about 15 yards down. That time Lowell did a better job, but that's the second pass that Perry has thrown behind the receiver when he had, uh, you know, he had an opening. So a third down and 14 for the Panthers. They really haven't cranked it up consistently on the offense yet. Worked themselves with a couple of penalties. Now Bowman lined up in the slot as a receiver. Perry looking downfield, dumps it across the middle, completes to Dalton. Does he have the first down? I think he does. I think Dalton taught, caught a good one in the back. Now he's up pretty quickly, kind of rolled over like he was hurt. Watch the play. Dalton is on the left-hand side of the field, and he goes with the rollout. He's coming across from the far side of the field. Good presence of mind by Perry. He doesn't panic. He just waits until Dalton clears and then just throws. Dalton does a nice job of coming back to the ball, and there's the hit while he's down on the ground, but Dalton found the opening, which is what good receivers do. So the Panther is moving the football now, first and 10 from the 33. Hurry to throw again. 
Looking down the sideline for Bowman, who was streaking towards the end zone, and Perry just overthrew him. Covered pretty well, though, on that play. He was pinched in on the sideline. Who was back there? Chris Burns was back there. What they did is they put Bowman out in the slot, and he just went down the sideline, tried to get him on a deep pass. You see Tom Rodolski talking to his secondary. He's no stranger to New Hampshire. He's a uh, 1979 graduate of the University of New Hampshire. A fellow alumnus with Scott Trench Montaigne. A couple years ahead of me, but we all bleed uh, blue and white. Pitch play. Up to the 30 is Sean Redburn. Redburn with two TDs as well last, uh, last week, along with that 158 yards. But uh, he just, not a lot of room. One of those, I think I'll go left, come back right, and kind of push ahead as best you can, picks up about three. And that sets up third and seven from just inside the 30. Lowell has yet to mount much of a pass rush on Perry. Let's see what he does here. He's got Dalton and Latender on the same side. Linebackers tighten the cushion a little bit. Here it comes. They got him this time. Jimmy Bennett on the blitz. Nobody touched him. Watch, he'll come out of the left-hand side of your screen. Actually, it's the right-hand side of your screen. Nobody touches him, and Perry never sees him, and boom, there he comes. Missed the hit, though. You know, it was an arm hit, br brought him down. But I'll tell you what, if he <laughs> he was about six inches from really drilling him. It's a fourth and 12 on the loss, and they're in one of those situations where they're at the 35. What do you do? You're almost too close to punt, too far to kick the field goal, so you go for it. Fourth down and 12. I go to Latendre. Perry's got some time. Looking downfield. Touchdown, R.J. Latender. Nice call. Good call, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> nice pattern. Once again, great protection. Watch the protection that gives Perry. Latendre is on the left-hand side of your screen down on the bottom, and he's got a long way to go. He's running across the field. Look at that protection. Nobody's even close. And finally, Perry looks down and finds him. And uh, Latendre had beaten the defensive back, number 44, Reyes, and just took it in. But I'll tell you what, that was about a, a nine-second developing play. So let's give the offensive line a big star. Ten plays on that scoring drive, and they chewed up four and a half minutes in doing so. Big call on fourth down. They went for it, and they got not only the first down, but the touchdown. Kind of a Marino-like play. He's got two of those this year. And Let's take a break. 3.51 left in this first quarter. The score, Plymouth Panthers 7, Riverhawks nothing. Do you think we've changed? I mean, the money. Do you think it's changed us? Well, I guess we're a little more secure. We've got less to worry about. We have more time to spend with the kids. I still play, you know. Every week. You don't actually think you could ever hit the number again, do you? I never thought I could hit the number in the first place. Today, Pavlovian experiment, using vast scientific knowledge, we spent six months conditioning the subject to respond to a ringing bell with an uncontrollable craving for the ultimate beverage. A demonstration. Pretty impressive drive for the Plymouth Panthers. They came away with the Big touchdown strike from Perry to Latendre, and they've got that seven nothing lead. I'm not quite sure what that play is. Kick. They fake, they do that a lot. They fake the kick. But some uh, kind of uh, psychological thing, or Albers now I think will kick it away, and he does. Squids it on the ground, fielded by uh, one of the upmen, Kayumjin. And he's up near the 34-yard uh, line. A lot of more squibbing going on this year. Have you noticed that guy's kicking off? Uh, I tell you, that's giving away some pretty good field position. Ellen Weinberg down on the field with uh, Wayne Edwards, the athletic director for UMass Lowell. Ellen? Thanks, guys. With me, I have athletic director from Lowell University, Dr. Um, Wayne Edwards. It's a really young team. They've got 48 freshmen that they brought up today. What do you think about that? 
Ellen, uh, Coach Fedelski has been with us now for 16 months. He was not left with a lot of talent when he came in from Columbia a year or so ago, and uh, he had a great recruiting class last year, started with 53 freshmen. As you mentioned, we have 48 here today. It's going to take us another couple of years to get back to, to the point that we were a few years ago, but we have a lot of uh, confidence in what's going on, and we think our team is really going to hit its uh, stride in about another two years. Great. So that's what's your goal for uh, the program? Well, obviously, we want to be competitive in the Freedom Football Conference. So as a Division II school, we also have to play five Division II. So we just want to be the best that we can be at the level we're now playing. Great. Thanks for joining us. And uh, back upstairs to you guys. Thank you, Ellen. We've got a second and five for the Riverhawks from just inside their 40. They'd like to answer here. Nothing doing there for Dana Maxwell. He got stacked up right at the line. Yeah, it looked like uh, not, they weren't quite meshing on that one. He came a little bang in the backfield, but I'll tell you what, they had the penetration. All three defensive linemen who formed the front wall were inside, and then the linebackers came after. So I don't care if that thing went off perfect. Maxwell was going down right away. He actually lost about uh, two, three yards on the play. Sets up a third and seven from the 36. Let's see if they're going to pass. Remember... On a third and long last time, they didn't pass the ball. Boudreaux now to the air. He's in trouble again. Boudreaux is sacked and sacked hard. John Morley was the uh, prime instigator defensively. Morley came in from that left-hand side. Take a look at it on the replay. Watch Morley lower part of your screen. He just comes in and actually just pushes somebody back. I didn't realize it was that... Uh, well, Morley just came in, but that was brute strength. Just pushed the tackle right back into the quarterback. Well, he blew past Maxwell, too. Crowley with a rainmaker. Fair catch. Dropped. And then covered up. That was a great recovery on the part of Levine. He yeah. lost it. I thought there was going to be our one, the first turnover, that plus three that Lowell needed, Scott. Watch this one. It just carried. It's very windy out there, and it just carried, and I think it... At uh, the last minute, it pushed ahead, went right through his arms. He just a little lost his orientation. But look at the dive to get there. Nice job. There's Andy. Do you clap for a fumble and a recovery on a guy? Say so good play, because I think that was a good play. Crowley really uh, got a lot of height. Serious hang time on that punt. He was punting into a pretty decent breeze. That was a great punt. It was a great punt. That was way up in the air. It also was a semi-knuckleball. Plus, it had the wind under it. Well, Plymouth, no worse for the wear. They've got the ball. That they're backed up a little bit on their penalty. So, uh, first and 10 from their 20. There's a little defense talking it over. And Plymouth stays on the ground. That was Hutchins' first carry. We haven't seen much of Hutchins yet, at least carrying the ball. On the replay, they try to make it look like they're going to the tailback. They're going to give it a pitch, and the fullback just runs in and takes the ball. Look at that power. It lowers the head. Boom, takes the second guy. There's Burns, the second man coming in. And uh, he is a load going through there. Picks up eight yards. Hutchins carried Mark Taylor for the last three or four of those yards. On second down, Perry will look to the air again. Hutchins wide open. He's got the first down, scoots out of bounds near the 40. There's that Bill Parcells fullback tight end passing game. They gave, they like the play action pass. They gave him the fake inside, and then he just went out into the flat. The linebackers cleared out. I'm not sure where they went, but watch, he just goes through the line like he's going to run the ball. Nice catch. Stayed right on it with some running room, and uh, he picks up the first down before he goes out of bounds. Mark Taylor was the defensive player there on the play. First down and 10 from the 38. Perry throwing again. Has Dalton. Dalton wow. at midfield. Wow. That cushion, that was 15 yards off the line of scrimmage. The quarterback, Tom and Canarcio, was over there watching on the replay. I mean, you just can't give up that kind of room. He's got to move up and play him a little bit tighter. Respect is one thing, but... I mean, when you got a guy, look at the distance there. He's got five, six, seven, eight steps before he gets there and is able to make the hit. And you, as a defensive back, have got to wait for the guy to get there because if you go at him, you're a dead man. You've got to be able to make that open field tackle. It was a great tackle. It was a nice job of tackling, holding your ground, but 
giving up too much room in the corner. And he's again, he's about nine yards off the line of scrimmage. And Perry rolls out to his right. He'll just scoot out of bounds near the 40. About a five or six yard pickup. You got to believe that UMass Lola's is playing that loose, trying to prevent against the deep threat, but they've already been burned on that. Yeah, and I don't really think that, uh, I mean, Dalton's an experienced receiver, but it's not like he's uh, got the speed of uh, Rocket Eshmael, you know. <laughs> I mean, you got to bring it up a little bit closer. It also opens up some areas on the defense because, I mean, on the end. I mean, they're going at it. They just ran around the end that time. They don't have the cornerback to come in and push him inside when he's that far away. Second and five from the 41. Perry will go back to what works, throwing it. Looking downfield. Oh! Nearly a tremendous catch by La <laughs> Latondre. Well. Boy, he was extended that time. Wow, and I also thought, I, actually I was yelling because I thought he was going to get drilled by Rays, who's playing in the middle of the field, playing center field. Latendre is going down the right-hand side. Once again, good protection. But watch from the middle of your screen, number 44 coming in here, as he's just about the ball's hung up, and there goes. I thought Rays was a couple of steps away, but from our angle, looks like he was right there. I thought he was just going to drill him as soon as he touched it. RJ got his hands on the ball, but... Just couldn't hold on as he hit the turf. So third and five from the 41. Perry in trouble. Draw. Redburn's got the first down. Good call there. Yeah, I like the call. Also, the execution was very good. It wasn't just one of those go back and wait kind of a screens. Uh, Perry was going back as Redburn was coming up to meet the ball. And it was very, it was a quick developing draw. Watch this. Redburn is on the full gallop before he gets it, or at least a couple of steps into it. And then he's got some room and the speed on the outside to take it up for the first down. 16 seconds left in this first quarter. Panthers moving again, first and 10 from their 35. And going back to the big fullback, Kevin Hutchins, who really didn't get too much. Nice job on the defensive side, Bill Alves. Made the stop among a couple of other guys, but uh, that was a little bit sm slower in developing. That's the end of the first quarter here from Curry Memorial Field. The score, Plymouth State up by seven. Nestled in the foothills of the White Mountains, Plymouth State College is a multi-purpose co-educational institution dedicated to providing students with an outstanding educational experience. With a full-time enrollment of about 3,000 students, Plymouth State College is one of four member institutions of the University System of New Hampshire. Founded in 1871 as the Plymouth Normal School, Plymouth State has a long-standing tradition of providing quality education in the areas of teacher preparation, liberal arts and sciences, and business studies. The primary goal at Plymouth State is to ensure student success. That means that Plymouth's graduates will have the skills and abilities to attain personal and professional excellence after college. How does Plymouth impart these skills and abilities? Through a general education program that guarantees that graduates will possess a basic appreciation for the arts, literature, technology, communication, and history. Through the widespread use of computers and academic instruction, through a writing across the curriculum program in which all students, regardless of their major, learn how to write well and why it's essential to be a proficient writer. And through a caring faculty and staff that is actively involved in the learning process. At Plymouth State, the mission is to combine academics with co-curricular activities. This creates an environment for students in which scholarly achievement, maturity, personal expression, and self-confidence are produced. Plymouth students, for example, have gone on to become environmental biologists, financial managers, school teachers, professional actors and musicians, therapists, astronomers, and Navy pilots, to name just a few. From the clock tower in Rounds Hall to the three-quarter of a million volumes in Lamson Library to the modern computer science facilities in Memorial Hall, there are constant reminders of Plymouth's past, present, and future on the White Mountain campus. With more than 50 major fields of study, Plymouth State is a place to learn and to grow, to make lifelong friends, and to chart one's future course in life. Back to the action here at uh, Plymouth State College in Plymouth, New Hampshire, where the Panthers have the 7 0 lead. We missed one play while we were away. It was a pretty good pitch out to David Bowman. Big gainer, but the penalty brought it back. And that is the, uh, that's, Plymouth has been penalized. That's their fifth penalty for 50 yards, I'm sorry, 40 yards here in the first cat. And, you know, one play past the fourth quarter. That's a lot. 
So instead of having a first down down near the 20-yard uh, line, they've got second and 22 from their 46. That penalty hurts. Redburn on the pitch. He's got some blockers. Nice pickup, but he's got a lot more uh, real estate to, to go. I'll tell you, though, look at the, the acceleration. When he gets past the line of scrimmage, to me, that's the thing. The two most important things to me in, a, in an offense, in a, in a running back, are number one is vision. If you notice, guys who are really great running backs, they have vision. They see everything develop. They find that hole. And then they have the ability to accelerate. Boom. They don't have to be the fastest guy in the world. But when they get to the hole, they get there very fast, and they can pick up speed in a hurry. Third and 13, R.J. LaTondra split out real wide. Dalton, great catch. No, incomplete. Penalty In flag. and out of the hands of Matt LeBlanc. Penalty flag. I think we're going to get interference on the play. I don't know. That was really close. It did look close. It looked like uh, LeBlanc nearly made the great catch, but I thought it was pretty good defense as well. All right, can I ask you something? Sure. Back to my favorite penalty in football. My favorite you have, call in you football. You have a favorite penalty. My favorite, no, not penalty, but my favorite call in football is the ground can't cause oh, a fumble. Yeah. Then how can the ground not cause an, uh, a, a drop pass? Okay, this is exactly the play. He is going deep on the pass. He gets out there. He's got his hands on it. He's holding it right there. Okay, fine. Is it? And I dropped no, it before he went down. So much for my favorite play, but if how can the ground not cause a fumble on one end and then but cause an incomplete pass on the other? Not consistent. It's apples and oranges. They You're talking about passing and rushing. If it can <laughs> knock it out of an incomplete pass, it can knock it out of a runner's hand from the ground. It was a defensive pass interference. So even though it was an incompletion, Plymouth State got some great yardage at it. First and 10 now near the 25. And that was close. I thought the pretty decent defensive job of the part of Lowell. Bowman cuts it back towards midfield, trying to make something out of nothing. Let's go down on the field now where Ellen Weinberg is with John Garner from the ECAC. Hi, I'm fortunate to have ECAC Assistant Commissioner John Gardner with me, who is also a Plymouth State graduate and was here in 1984 when they had their most successful year. What similarities do you see in these two teams? I think both teams, first of all, had a very strong, hard-hitting defense. Uh, obviously, a lot of quality athletes. The other thing is the quarterbacks. Larry Cummings, a six-foot-two, strong-arm quarterback back in '84, led them to a 10-0 season. I see very a lot of similarities between him and Joel Perry, the current quarterback, about the same size, with a very strong throwing arm. And thus far, we've seen a lot out of uh, Perry today. Back upstairs to you guys. Thank you, Ellen and John. Versatile, John Garner. Man of many hats. He is. I thought she was going to say he was here in 1945. <laughs> I thought he was here in 1945. Well, I hope he wasn't here in 1945, because that means I would have been here in 1945. I think they're going to go third and about two. They're going to go off the right-hand side, or at least they do that a lot to let Hutchins lead it. Bowman gets the call. He may have it with his last second lunge. Well, I'll tell you, if he has it, it's a matter of how tall he is because he did not move once that leg got grabbed except for the fact that he just laid down on the ground and stretched out as far as he could as they go to the right-hand side. Looked like he had some room. I think he ran into Hutchins or Rawner, the uh, up back. They had three people in the line of scrimmage, but he did not get it. And Plymouth will call a timeout on fourth and one. Let's take a break from Courier Memorial Field in Plymouth. The score... Panthers 7, Riverhawks nothing. Some people are naturally faster than others. In fact, everything they do is fast. Fast, 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 fast. Now, not everyone appreciates that. But if you're looking to get a new GM car or truck financed, fast is exactly what you want. Mac will take care of your financing. And the folks who arrange GMAC financing and leasing are faster than just about anyone else. GMAC, the expressway home. You forgot your sunglasses. Enjoy a beautiful fall day at the University of Massachusetts. Start the day off with a barbecue tailgate. Then experience the excitement of UMass football at McGuirk Alumni Stadium. Come cheer on Coach Mike Hodges and his Minutemen as they battle to win a record 18th Yankee Conference Championship. UMass has six home games, including the 1993 Division I AA champion Youngstown State. Order your tickets for all games by calling the UMass Athletic Ticket Office at 413-545-0810. UMass football keepers of the tradition. 
There's a story here from Plymouth State. ECAC Game of the Week here on Sports Channel. Scott Tranchmontane and Dave Long from Plymouth. Glad you could be with us today. Joel Perry has had uh, his words on the sideline with uh, his coach Don Brown and uh, Joe Applebaum, offensive uh, coordinator and quarterback's coach. They've got the play on fourth and one. Now it's uh, time to execute. Yeah, I don't think it was a question of are they going to go for it or not in this position. I think it was a matter of they want to make sure that they get the right play. And uh, I would be surprised that they're going to go up top. My guess is they go inside the Hutchins. I think maybe Rauner's in the game. Yeah, well, Rauner checks in as the up man. But uh, I would think that they're just going to go over the guards. They like to do things pretty simple on plays like this. Quarterback keeper. That should do it. No question about that. Pick up the first down. Take a look at it. Nothing simple. I mean, nothing you need <laughs> complex. A, you need a timeout to call that play, though. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you got well, maybe it was a debate. Maybe they're trying to think of it, and all of a sudden, somebody in the middle. It's one of those things where you're trying to outsmart yourself, and then somebody kind of says, hey, why don't we just do this? <laughs> so they go right over the center, Paul Drone, a guy who was probably the hardest worker on this team. They, uh, they had to kick him out of the weight room during the offseason. He likes to work so hard, so go over there. Let him earn it. 5'11", but uh, 257. So he packs a punch. First down and the pitch to Bowman. Trying to turn the corner. Still going. He's inside of the five. Good speed. Linebacker Chris Gimond was there. But uh, watch the stiff arm by Bowman as he comes to the right-hand side of your screen. Gimond shoots the gap. He's there. Bowman's got the speed that puts Gimond a little bit of a disadvantage. And there's the stiff arm. And uh, R.J. standing there, Latendra gets the biggest hit from his own guy. And they'll say, and they'll say when they uh, watch it on the films, you say, hey, you should have knocked that guy down, so otherwise you wouldn't have got hit so hard. Second down and goal from the three. Panthers knocking on the door again. They lead 7-0. Not enough for Kevin Hutchins. And Lowell doing a nice job inside. Second time they've had that short yarded situation. Last time it was outside the 10. This time they're in the goal to goal situation. But they did not let uh, the big, the left hand side of that Plymouth State line, push him out of the way. Brandon Horgan, the left guard, couldn't uh, push him back. So third down and goal from the one. And Bowman over the top. He's got it. Did they used to dive into the end zone before Sam Cunningham with the <laughs> Patriots, or was that the first guy who invented that? But Sam look at Bam. Bowman. He sees a little daylight, and he just takes it and says, okay, you're going to go down and try and submarine. I'm going over the top. Bang, lands in for the score. When you score a touchdown, generally you don't feel it when you smash into the ground like that. Well, OJ uh, used to use that quite effectively in his college heydays. That's true. Uh, I don't know. He usually was uh, past everybody with his yeah. speed. <laughs> He'd land on the other side of the end zone. Flag on the play. The extra point is no good. It hit the upright and uh, caroomed out as Paul Descoli hit the post, and there was a flag nonetheless, so we'll sort it out. Let's take a break now with Plymouth State on top, 13-0. For over 50 years, the Eastern College Athletic Conference has assured its membership of the highest level of organization and competition in collegiate athletics. The ECAC is the largest athletic conference in the NCAA, representing about 25% of its members. Comprised of 256 colleges and universities, encompassing divisions 1, 2, and 3, the ECAC is a conference of conferences, including the Ivy League, the Big East, the East Coast Conference, and numerous other conferences in all divisions. Among the highest awards for quality in the world is the Deming Award. Very few manufacturers have ever won one. RICO has two of them. In fact, RICO copiers and fax machines have won every major award for copier and fax quality. So we don't just have a reputation for excellence. We have proof. The name to know, RICO. The score remains 13-0 Plymouth as the penalty was declined by UMass Lowell, and why not? They missed the extra point. Yeah, I can't imagine what the discussion was about. Let's give it back. Let's take it back 15 yards and give them a shot to put it home. 
which they didn't do. I'll tell you, that one would have had the distance. It was just kicked a little bit to the left, but it was high up on that uh, crossbar. There's that uh, fake kickoff again. We've got to pull Don Brown aside and see what's up with that. They do it every time. Kiyumjin again, the up man who fields the kickoff, takes a hard hit up by the 34. Generally what those do is, I mean, you're, you're going to concede the fact that you're giving up uh, field, some decent field position because there's almost no way, unless they can't field it, that they're going to get it up above the 30. But you're almost preventing the fact or guaranteeing the fact that someone's not going to run it back on you. Yeah, but when your up man is uh, Kiyumjin, I mean, he's certainly capable of uh, breaking one. Talented fullback. Not going to outrun anybody, though. Yeah, he, they keep it out of the hands of Harrison Maxwell. Boudreaux on the option just gets rid of the ball at the last minute. Not a big gainer for Jason Harris, but pretty nice execution on the play. And I'll tell you, it was good defense, too. Andy Levine was right there. They stretched it out. So they, you know, they had the handoff. It was the right decision on the part of the quarterback. He took it out of the fullback's hands, uh, Comugian, and then just took it to the outside. But he was forced to pitch it because there was a defender on him, and then Levine was right there. So that was very good defensive execution to cover the three options. Got to have a lot of respect for the quarterbacks who hang in there till the very last instant and then pitch as they're getting crunched. Well, just think of the presence of mind that goes is, that's a part of it, too. I mean, those are last-second decisions that happen. Great defensive stack-up for the Panthers at the line. You know, so it's not even a question of just taking the hit, which it is. It's a matter of instinct. If you kind of, if you got to think when you're running along that line and it's not an instant reaction, you're going to get stuck with the ball. It was Jason Friedman who led the charge defensively on that last play. I, I love that number for a defensive end, number 44. 44. Plymouth's got a lot of them. Their defensive lineman, John Morley, on the left defensive end is number 42. Go figure. That one's up for grabs and incomplete. I think it was Compton who stepped in. They tried the quick pass. Once again, they're not, it shows that they're not real comfortable with their passing game because they tried the quick hitter on third and ten. And uh, the Plymouth defensive player, I think, as I say, I think it was number 97, Colby Compton, with the hit. Andy Levine back to return the punt just outside his 30. Bad snap for Crowley, but no rush, fortunately, and he gets the punt away, angling that toward the sideline. Good bounce for UMass Lowell. It is downed at the 25. And how do you like the presence of mind? A lot of guys would be, oh, my gosh, when it's down on the ground like that. But he just kind of looked like he was taking a walk in the park. Okay, I got to pick this up and then get rid of the good kick. So give him a, and that was a good play. Well, he caught a break that Plymouth wasn't coming at him, too. Right, but your, but your instinct as a player there, you're almost, when, when you lose the ball in a situation like that, you almost feel that they're going to be coming at you. And, you know, the instinct is to hurry. But he didn't do it there. Panthers start first and 10 from their 26. They've got the 13-point lead with 10-17 left in this second quarter. Hutchins. And the yeoman's effort, two, three yards, through to the gut. Right up the gut, through the middle. Lowell is uh, sticking with that uh, the basic defense. They go with the pro set, four down linemen, three linebackers, and the four people on the back in the defensive backfield. I haven't seen a lot of sh switches, substitutions. Second down and eight for the Panthers. Hutchins now in motion. Pitch to Bowman. Looking to follow Hutchins around that end. Nice job. Guimon was right there in that pile, about three... Different sets of bodies. Jim Bennett, the linebackers, they both filled. Iman came from the middle. Bennett was on the left-hand side. And Bowman really had nowhere to go with that other than just put your head down and try and get as much out of it as you can. Third and four now for the Panthers at their 32. So far, so good for the uh, homecoming faithful here. That's Charles L. Courier Memorial Field. Nice, uh, nice crowd here. Nice day. Foothills of the White Mountains. Perry with lots of time again, rolling out, throws across his body. Latondra hauls it in, and he's got the first down. He's at midfield. Latondra now with a big gainer down to the 35. And I think that gives you an idea why RJ runs back the kickoffs as well. 
He did a great job of running with the ball after he caught it. I'll tell you what, as Perry watched the, the uh, once again, great protection on the part of the offensive line for the Panthers. Perry runs out of the pocket, but he's got a lot of room for the first down. I mean, he there's almost no way. That's a tough throw across your body. I thought he was going to Rauner, and here comes R.J. with the ball. Watch him split right here. The defender, look at that block as well. I didn't even see that the first time, and uh, it is a big gainer. Several good plays in that one. All the way down to the 34-yard line, Perry overthrows Dalton that time, and we got flags. Yeah, and that was off the ball. They threw it in the uh, direction of Bennett, the linebacker for Lowell, and uh, I'm not sure who was in a little battle with him down there, but I don't, uh, if it's like that, it's either a hit after the whistle or maybe a uh, maybe another, a face mask of some kind. In ineligible receiver. Again. As uh, nose guard, I'm sorry, excuse me, it was uh, 71. That's Fletcher Johnson, the right tackle who was downfield. We've seen, that's bizarre almost that you see two of those calls. You don't see that too often. We've seen it twice already against Plymouth. And maybe it won't be the last time we see it. Maybe it's a matter <laughs> of, uh, you know, sometimes that happens, though, when you're in a, when you're passing the ball and you're used to, well, in that case, it wasn't, it really has, doesn't uh, come into play. But when you have a lot of time, your quarterback moves around. Sometimes the linemen think the quarterback is going to put it under his arm yeah. and run with it, and you pick him up that way. But that was a quick pass. Almost didn't have time to get down the field to do that. First and 15. Great defensive play on Redburn. Scott Dimitri. Scott Dimitri shoots in from the left hand, I mean the right hand side of your screen. They're trying to go to the sideline, and he's just split the gap between the right tackle and the tight end and uh, wraps up or at least gets around the ankles of Redburn. So that's a big play on the first and 15. Now it's second and 20. Wonder if they're going to pass. Okay, look for RJ on the crossing patterns. They seem when they go for the long distance play or they need to get, pick up a lot of cut yardage. Uh, they go to him on the crossing patterns. He's wide open, but he's looking downfield and that's traps. Trapped by Redburn. Tell you what though, nice nice hands on the part of Redburn. Ozzie Smith couldn't have done any better on that one. He short hopped it. Scooped it right up. And got it, he was, and it was going back across his body. There's a, a good shot of Sean Redburn, his first year with the Panthers. But uh, he had the crossing pattern. He circled out of the backfield. And uh, that area of the field is wide open. That's about the third play that we've seen where a guy was open. Perry at that time just didn't get him the ball. Came up short. Latandre was wide open too on the left side. He did not run the crossing pattern though. He did a little button hook and uh, with that big cushion. Now is the time to give the cushion to the cornerbacks. Third and 20. Perry scrambling, looking downfield, fires, incomplete. Nice job in the part of Lowell. They really didn't give him any opportunity. Perry was kind of hopeful as he was running out of there, but he never really had a chance to set himself and look because the pocket was kind of had been pushed back in his face and he had to get out. Of, did a nice job to avoid the tackle, but uh, that was a good defensive series for Lowell, other than the one big play by Latandre. Paul Descoli to punt. And he drops the snap. That one's straight up. And it's coming back, too. Took a uh, didn't even, low bounce. I'll tell you, the first down, it, it didn't even get a first down. 13 nothing here from a Courier Field in Plymouth. We'll be back after this. When safety and performance are on the line, Team Napa driver Stub Fadden uses only genuine Napa parts. He knows Napa delivers on the track and in his family car, too. Napa performance and reliability. Rely on Napa. Right now, when you buy a Napa waterless hand cleaner at the sale price of just 99 cents, you'll get a Stub Fadden 164 scale miniature race car absolutely free. So stop by your local Napa auto parts store today. Today, Pavlovian experiment, using fast scientific knowledge, we spent six months conditioning the subject to respond to a ringing bell with an uncontrollable craving for the ultimate beverage. A demonstration. This 
Christmas quality time was made possible by GMAC. Wow! With financing and leasing that can be arranged for your new GM vehicle fast, right at the dealership. Because GMAC believes you should be out enjoying your new car instead of waiting for it to be financed. GMAC, the expressway home. Warning, the purrs are coming. October, November, December. Ooh. Prepare with Leisure Air and a trip to the sun. Call now and save now. 1-800-JET-SOUTH for Leisure Air's Bear Buster. Boston to Orlando from an incredible $79. Boston to West Palm Beach from an unbelievable $79. Boston to Los Angeles from an unimaginable $99. And Orlando vacation packages start at a Bear Boston 229. So beat the purrs. Call 1-800-JET-SOUTH. Prepare with Leisure Air now. Kayumjin on the first play from scrimmage rumbles his way for about five. And once again, that was the first option on the left. They just went to the left-hand side of the line. They just gave it to Kamujin. He was the first guy through. And uh, they have decided to try and there's, a, there's a, a, a place to attack. They've had two or three good gains, three or four, I should say, good gains off of that particular play using the first option. And they keep it on the ground, but not much there for Dana Maxwell, who was trying to find a seam in the backfield, and then everything closed in on him. You know, I think he was too close to the line of scrimmage to be able to really scan and see where that opening was. It was only about, he came out of the wingback position, only about three yards behind the line of scrimmage to really get a good look at what's going on. you got to be about six yards back there, so, you know, he, uh, he couldn't really see where to go, so he had to kind of stop and, and look, and, and the penetration got to him at that point. Third down and seven for Dana Boudreau and his River Hawks. Rolling out, has a blocker. Throwing downfield, is it complete? No, incomplete, up near midfield. He had Harris open too. He came out of the right halfback slot going down into the, uh, down into the sideline area and uh, he was open, but it, I th it think the pass would have been short of the first down, so uh, Boudreau decided to go upfield a little bit and see if he could pick, uh, you gotta pick up the first down, so. He elected for that and came up short on the pass. I don't think Lowell's completed a pass yet, have they? No. Levine back to return. Crowley, the split end, who's also the punter. He got hit again. And there goes the flag. Levine at his 25. He's in trouble. Now it is 20. And Crowley drew the uh, roughing the kicker penalty once again. And I'll tell you, they had a lot of green shirts in the backfield. Take a look at this. They do a good job. I think, you know, Crowley really drew this himself. You know, he saw it was coming. He kept his eyes there. And uh, here come the shirts all over the place. I think the hit came from the middle. Check that. No, it wasn't. It was uh, Mark Turcott, defensive back, number seven, who got him. Well, punters need to be part-time actors as well. Turcott's contact was uh, merely incidental. It looked like he hit him with his wrist. He's a drama major. It's yeah. got to be. <laughs> hey, like, there's an art. It's like drawing an offensive foul in basketball. Yeah, it is. You know, there's certain guys who are just really good at it, and it looks like they're getting drilled, and what they do is they're falling as the, the contact, before the contact happens, but close enough, they're able to fool the officials. Don that, Brown wasn't fooled at all, was he? It looks like he's happy with the call. <laughs> But uh, Lowell is going to take it over, and this is the first time in quite some time they're close to being in Plymouth's side of the field. Kayumjin on the quick handoff, about five there. So, yeah, I think that's very important for Lowell to be able to establish something as to how they do on first down because obviously they're, have, they're struggling with their passing game. They really need to pick up about four or five yards on the ground on first down. And, or not necessarily have to be on the ground, but they need to get a good gain on first down because that allows them uh, that allows them to uh, uh, some options when they go into second down situation. Doesn't let Plymouth stack for the pass. Second and six here, and Jason Harris on the reverse. Nice gainer for the first down. Jason Harris, number 11, nice job. Came out of the right wing back spot, changed his number on us, was number one last week, but at, uh, not a big guy at 5'6", 166, but he's got those quick feet. The Riverhawks moving the football. They've got first and 10 now from the 37. Problem is they trail 13-nothing. Another reverse, this time Maxwell. That was a nice job of running by Maxwell. 
You know, as he came out, I think it was a cross puck almost, the old kind of a cross puck play. He could have gone outside, but the defensive, uh, I think it was Jerry who stepped in or somebody on the linebacker to force it inside. He made the nice cut. There it is. And uh, he takes it up for about six yards. Once again, a good gain on first down, Scott. And on second and four, Boudreaux on the option. Nice job just to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Might have picked up a yard, but he could have easily been taken down for a loss. Seamus Mason down in the bottom of that pile. Ellen, Ellen, please. Ellen Weinberg on the field, Ellen. Thanks, guys. Down here, talking to the coach earlier before the game, he said his most versatile player for UMass Lowell. It's the leader of the team. Everybody has one of them. Scott Dimitri, number 72. Not only does he play on the defensive side of the game, but he also plays offense. And one remarkable fact about him is he transferred in from none other than Plymouth State. Back upstairs to you guys. Thank you, Ellen. On that big third down play, Plymouth uh, rose to the occasion defensively. Kayumjian. I don't think he got it, Dave. They're going to bring the chains out. Though. Yeah, I think he was short, too. I think in this situation, it's going to have to be a really long field goal. So if they don't make it, they're in fourth down territory. And i got to think they're going to go Ooh, for it. Look at that. But it looks like they got it by the stripe of the ball. <laughs> oh, boy. And they have communion is the kind of runner that, uh, you know, the short yardage type type of player and uh, I mean I wouldn't have had too much reservation about going for it there I mean you got to go for it there but uh, he's the kind of guy to get you that kind of tough yardage inside Maxwell on first and ten great Le defensive pressure for uh, Plymouth State Levine with a nice play he fought off the blocker they had a pulling guard going around the right hand side and he was banging away with Levine and at the last minute last minute Levine kind of jumped out of the way with good lateral movement, just stuck his hand and brought Maxwell down. Nice play. Here is Andy Bedford, New Hampshire. As you might get, as you might guess, a lot of New Hampshire guys on the Plymouth State's college team. Kayumjian gets the call on second and eleven. Big groan in the crowd. I don't know if there's a fumble down there. Doesn't look like there's a lot of action among the players. Roaming the sidelines, Don Brown, not real happy with the what's going on in this drive. Of course, it was kept alive by the penalty on the roughing the kicker playoff, the punt, the fourth down punt. Big play here, third and nine. Boudreau rolling, looking, passing. Great catch by Maxwell. I think he's got the first down as he knew right where that marker was. And I'll tell you, there wasn't a lot of room to get that ball in there. The defense had done a nice job. One thing, there's a penalty flag on the play, though. And it looks like it's going to be holding John Morley clapping his hands. But, uh, you know, what, one thing with this kind of a passing game is you'll see it. They show where they're going. There's not a lot of deception there. They just try and put people into areas, a deeper guy, a short guy, and maybe an up guy. And here goes the pass as it goes out of your screen. And Maxwell gets it as he's going out of bounds. But as you can see, there's two green shirts down there. The coverage was good. You've got to execute perfectly in a situation like that. Because they say there's not a lot of deception. Not, you're not going to fool very many people with that kind of a passing game. Well, tough mistake there for UMass Lowell. They had the first down on the great catch by Maxwell. And the penalty drops them all the way back to uh, third and 21. And these are the situations that kind of are uh, put them at risk to make a big mistake, maybe a turnover and interception. Boudreaux's in trouble. He did a great job of getting rid of the football. Because that was back. He was going down on about the 40-yard line. Seamus Mason, I believe, was in on that play. Yeah, number 50, Seamus had him all wrapped up. It was in the NFL. It was a sack. That's right. They would have called that dead ball. They probably would have, like, <laughs> given it a 10-yard gain. They protect the quarterback so much in pro <laughs> football. Crowley to punt. He'll be looking to cough and corner this one. Another good hang time. Kobe Compton almost ran underneath that and almost got hit in the back with it. Plymouth gets the good bounce. That ball never came close to Andy Levine, who was waiting for the return back about his 10-yard line. Yeah, they missed a chance to pick up some, put Plymouth into uh, 
a field position situation. Plymouth comes out of this one in great shape on the 26-yard line. They really could have been inside the 20s for sure and maybe inside the 10. Can't remember if I've ever seen a wide receiver doing the punting for a team. I don't know. I'll, I'll come up with somebody. I'm sure you will. First down and 10 from the 26 for Plymouth State. Quarterback, Danny White. Plymouth's quarterback is the backup punter. He was the punter a year ago, Andy Jackson. That's right. We called him Andrew Jackson of the Whig Party, former <laughs> old Hickory. But uh, <laughs> seen quarterbacks. I've seen halfbacks. Joe Washington used to quick pick for the uh, University of Oklahoma. I love that play. They'd hike it directly to him in his halfback slot. Second down and six. Perry back to the air. Flushed out. Lots of room. Looking back across field and through the hands of Dalton. I'll tell you, he passed up some open people. He was looking right at LeBlanc, who was open at about the 45-yard line. He waved him off and sent him down to the sidelines. And uh, he, was, he was wide open. I don't know why I didn't choose to pass to him. I mean, it's not like a case where he just had somebody after him. He didn't see him. Maybe there was a linebacker in his way where he couldn't zip it. He would have had to would have had to give it the touch pass. But and we have a, another penalty on the field. I didn't see the call. Was that holding? Another ineligible receiver downfield. See, and that's the kind of a situation where you generally do see them. Where uh, it was, it, it took a lot of time. Perry had rolled out to the left to, into the uh, to his left. Looked like he might put it under and run, and that's usually where you see those, but three in a game is a lot. Three and a half. Second down and 12 now from the 25. No, I think it's just three. Bowman gathers it in, and he heads right for that first down marker. He's up out of bounds about the 37. He definitely went for the first down marker. He ran right over it. Now that's a, those are the kind of plays where you get hurt. Sometimes the uh, the lines and the, the the guys holding that will keep it up there, and you run right into it. Bubba Smith, when he played 100 years ago in the NFL, sorry Bubba, wrecked a knee when he played for the Colts. And there you was the pass to Bowman. That game, you? <laughs> yeah, there's Bowman does a nice job uh, on the Barnett missed the tackle, and Bowman got him the first down. Good presence of mind. Oh, oh, what a hit! Matt LeBlanc felt that one, but he's getting up, and that's a good sign. And I will tell you this, that's exactly on that play when I, that, I, I only yell when like, uh, when there's going to be a big hit, and that one I saw all the way. Beautiful pass right in the hands, but the timing in the center field spot by Reyes just drills him in the numbers with his hat. I was going to say, unfortunately you saw it, but LeBlanc did not. Yeah, I'm probably going to say something to the quarterback <laughs> on that one. <laughs> well, not what you could do. LaTondra, Alvar midfield. Great tackle. And inside the 30. Chris Burns on a big tackle there. Once again, though, that, that area inside the hash marks is open. Tondra comes from the right-hand side, and he just runs the uh, oh, kind of a short flag pattern over the middle, and he just has the defenders. Nobody's there in the zone. They're all deep, too deep. From my opinion, there's the good tackle. Burns coming right at him, but... Uh, you know, once again, that cushions con con continues to give them problems, uh, continues to just give them too many open areas. Um, they have not been beat on the deep pass, seems to me. Maybe they'll talk it over at halftime to bring those guys up a little bit and say, okay, beat me deep, because they're hurting them with that, uh, those 15, 18-yard passing plays. Harry got that ball to him in a hurry. Nice crisp spiral across the middle, and LaTondre knows what to do with it once he gathers it in. Yeah, very good runner with the ball. Uh, as we said a couple of times when we saw the real good run in the last reception. But uh, it's pretty obvious why he averaged 22 yards a catch for the whole year last year. Although, as we said, he coming in, he really hadn't they'd gone a little bit more short game this year. He's only averaging about uh, 14 yards a catch, but that's going up today. So with a minute seven left in this first half, Panthers looking to put some more points on the board. They lead 13-0. They've uh, already taken one timeout, so they've got two left. They're going to have to go to passes to the sideline, get it out so they can get out of bounds. That one too wide for Dalton. That was way wide. 
That one would have went back to the screen if it was a pitch in baseball. Dalton going for about a six yard gain and just went to the sidelines. But better to miss there than catch one over the middle for about three yards because the clock stopped. It only took four seconds on the play. Problem with Perry now is he's throwing into a pretty decent breeze. So he's really got to zip it in there. Latondre, and he'll skip out of bounds near the 12. And I'll tell you, that baby was zipped. He threw that timing pattern on the left-hand side. Almost threw a little sidewinder out there. It, it was thrown as Latondre was making the cut. There he is right in the middle of your screen coming across. Nice throw for two reasons. Number one, it was zipped in there. But number two, it was thrown away from the defender. So if he missed on it, it would have went away, and the defender couldn't pick it off. Because that's the kind of that's the territory where there's no backup. If the defender gets in there and picks it off, he is gone. So good location on that pass. Tom Rodolski calls a timeout for his troops. They're uh, back to the wall again. First and 10 for Plymouth at the 12. And it's one thing to uh, go down and lock them down by two touchdowns, but uh, to go down by three and giving up that third in the last minute, that's uh, tough to bounce back in the second half. Uh, and, and, and add to the fact that Lowell is not a real comeback team and that they don't really rely too much on their passing game, as we talked about earlier. So they can't really get the points in a hurry. And uh, the other thing about that play, Latondre did the nice spin. He caught it and then just spun right back away. He was actually going toward the inside of the field, but spun to go out and shoot down the clock. Only took six seconds. Now Plymouth State has a little bit of time to kill with 57 seconds. First and 10 from the 12. Perry on the option. Redburn. Tackled out of bounds. Yeah, that was a nice job. That's a tough one to run to the short side of the field. And that's where they were. You know, there are a lot of people stacked up at that point with the tight end on the left-hand side of the field. That brings over another linebacker and kind of shows where you're going. And uh, when you go outside like they did, Redburn did not have a lot of room to maneuver. Go for me! Did get out of bounds, though. Oh, really? I thought uh, well, the clock stopped at 52. So second down and nine, and Perry nearly threw the interception. It was batted down. That one was in the middle of traffic. Nice job, though, on the part of... Uh, it was Dimitri. I'll tell you what, this is the situation, though, Scott, in terms of calling plays. Keep an eye on the cushion that the, the cornerbacks, once again, we've talked about it a few times earlier. If they give the big cushion here, why not just drive them down? They're on the 11-yard line or so. I mean, you can pick up about, well, now they've got to get almost get it into the end zone because it's third and eight. But uh, that kind of a cushion and working area gives them you know, a big advantage down here. But I expect that the uh, cornerbacks are going to play it a little bit tighter. And that's on the left-hand side. They're not, though. Third down and nine, Perry. No. Incomplete. Nice job on that side. Thought Sam Carey, the wide receiver, he had it. But at the last second, watch this. It's knocked out of his hands. Not sure who the defender was, but Carey has it. And uh, he has it for almost a step. But then at the last second, he, uh, the hand gets in there and he can't control it. Nice play. That was uh, Tom and Canarcio. So the field goal attempt is up, and it's good. And it had plenty of leg, I'll tell you. Paul Descoli splitting the uprights, giving the Plymouth State Panthers a 16 to nothing lead with 39 seconds to play in the second quarter. Don't, under, don't underestimate the value of the kicking game, both the punting and the obviously place kicking because points. And sometimes people don't really uh, you know, take that for granted, although look what's going on with the Patriots. You know, the Patriots had such problems last year. They are not missing Sisson. No. Scott Sisson this year, that Chris Barr put the hex, no hex, but he has yet to miss an extra point or a field goal. And there's a lot more confidence in the part of the coaching staff. And, uh, you know, Plymouth brings in Dia Scoli, who is the, uh, who's a freshman and obviously has a good leg and uh, adds an extra element of confidence to what you can do on third down in situations like that. You can make different, you know, you call a different game 
when you're confident that your kicker can get the ball through the uprights. And uh, like the Patriots, okay. the Panthers use two different kickers for kickoffs and for extra points and field goals. Kyle Albers is the kickoff man. Maybe he's got the fake down and the school he doesn't <laughs> hasn't mastered that fake yet. Another short kick. And a pretty decent run back up to the 35 yard line by uh, Joe Delisle. Don't expect Lowell to do much here with 34 seconds to go. Although, you know what? I think, why not fake one into the line? Maybe wait one more. You'll probably run out of time. Maybe wait one more play. Fake one in like you're going to down, like you're going to, uh, you know, just run it into the line and, and take the clock because Plymouth's not going to expect a long pass. Well, nothing fancy there. They keep it on the ground with Kayumjin. Another fl penalty flag was thrown in on that play. Went right into the middle of the pile. Generally a holding call on one side. It was lineman. Somebody in the line at definitely did that one. I didn't see it. Boudreaux seems to be signaling uh, some kind of face mask. Maybe another incidental face mask against Plymouth. Hey, my hand just got stuck in there, he's saying, you know. <laughs> How about that Brian Cox? My hand just got stuck in the helmet. <laughs> How about the interview after the game? Did you oh, see that? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, what do you expect? What are you, I mean, crazy? I, <laughs> I mean, I think... <laughs> you can't repeat what he said. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the question was baited. I mean, are, what was the question? Are you happy about causing your team a 15-yard penalty? Yeah. I mean, what do you or how do you feel about it? Nah, mm -hmm. uh, well. What are you, crazy? <laughs> on a beep, beep, beep. It was well. not a happy guy. I mean... Of course, that's always tough to be in a locker room like that after a tough loss and then ask those questions. You know, some guys are, you know, some guys uh, answer those questions and going to take it in stride, know it's part of their job, and then there's the other volatile type. Brian Cox is of the world. Yeah. That's not the first time his mouth has got him in trouble. No, not at all. He's suing, and I think he's suing the city of Buffalo. <laughs> he is. He's suing the city of Buffalo for, uh, I think it's racial taunts or something along that line, and... Uh, well, that's unconfirmed, but it's something along that line. He's not trying to get money, but they were giving him a hard time when he goes up there and plays. Trying to get a gag order on the crowd, is like, that? Yeah, and I mean, think about that. With uh, Now he's going to go up there next time you play. That's definitely going to scare him and get everybody not to say anything in the crowd. He's just asking for trouble. Time runs out on this first half. Very good first half. If you're a Plymouth State Panther fan, there you see it. 16 nothing Panthers over the Riverhawks from UMass Lowell. We'll be back after this. This quality time was made possible by GMAC with financing and leasing that can be arranged for your new GM vehicle fast, right at the dealership. Because you should be out enjoying your new car instead of waiting for it to be financed. GMAC, the expressway home. Something's wrong with my phone. Once, there was a small business owner who spent so much time managing his phone system, he fell behind in his other work. Then one day, he discovered new Centrex Plus from Linex, and he switched to this affordable system designed just for small business. Now Linex takes care of his phone system, and our hero, well, the moral, call 1-800-PLUS-NOW. Get Centrex Plus and get more time for the big picture. Enter the dream home of the 90s, captured within the pages of Log Home Living magazine. Whether you're dreaming about living in a log home or you're making your dream a reality, Log Home Living is the publication you must have. Every other month, you'll receive your copy of Log Home Living, covering the essentials on buying, building, and maintaining a log home. You'll receive guidance on site selection, creative floor plans, technical tips, financing, decorating, and much more. With your paid subscription of $19.95, you'll automatically get the next annual buyer's guide, 300 pages filled with everything you need to know to build a log home. And as a free bonus gift, you'll receive the Log Home Plans book, including over 100 pages of photographs and complete floor plans that will guide you step-by-step -step through construction. This tremendous offer of one year of Log Home Living magazine, including the annual buyer's guide and the Log Home Plans book, a value worth over $30, is all yours for only $19.95. Don't let your dreams slip away. Keep them alive with Log Home Living Magazine. Call today. Back at halftime here at Plymouth State where the 
Panthers lead the Riverhawks from UMass Lowell 16 to nothing. And tell me about this passing contest that's going on down the field, Dave. Chevy dealers of New England. Fred Medor, who's a big supporter of the Plymouth State College program, has uh, players out there on the sidelines have got to throw it through a target. And if they do, they win 100 bucks. There it is. Someone did it. Last guy just did it. He's got 100. There's a, a miss on the side. <laughs> Each, per, each contestant gets two shots at it. Now the camera angle, the camera uh, lies. That's much farther distance. It doesn't look that hard from there, but they're about uh, 25 yards away from that. Target. You gotta snap that ball. You gotta zing it in there. Drew would, Bledsoe would be like racking up the hundreds here. <laughs> it's about from uh, Z510, about a 15 yard toss. I wanna go out there and take a shot at it. 100 bucks, not bad. There you go. <laughs> that helps your homecoming weekend festivities. That's right. Another winner, <laughs> Make a good time. And there he goes over to pick up his money. Andy Medor is a former Plymouth Thank State College basketball up. player. Got the checkbook right there. That's a good-looking Chevy truck down there, too. We've got the keys here for you in case you want to uh, just drive it out of there. I'd like to take that thing home for the weekend. They're bringing, I'll tell you what, they're bringing people out of the stands here. <laughs> I mean, there's more new people coming up. There's supposed to be three people. There's a bad miss. Well, if you don't even hit the wood. Good catch, that's though. That's trouble. Good hands. The Lions could have used that guy. Okay, there it is. We're going to get the tallies at some point. Oh, we've had a couple of winners. I guess if you don't win the 100, you get the uh, Nerf football to go. And a T-shirt. Ellen Weinberg's down there trying to grab the winner and see what he's going to do with his 100. We're going to see where what's uh, what the story, but uh, all right. All right, let's go down. Ellen, go ahead. I got two big happy guys at one and half time. What are your names? Paul Hockman, alumni. My name is Brooks Parker. Brooks, was this the easiest hundred dollars you've ever won? You bet. What about you? Most definitely, most definitely the easiest. It's w one great thing to come back for homecoming, and and it's unexpected to be able to win a hundred dollars while you do it. Exactly, you're exactly right. Great, back upstairs to you guys. Some happy fellows down there at uh, midfield. I wonder if those guys were high school quarterbacks. I don't know, but I know that I noticed there were the assistant coaches who were out there getting their name. Maybe there's some recruiting. They lose their amateur status though with that hundred, don't they? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe they do. Let's, let's take. Go, yeah, let's go back and take a look at that first touchdown. This was that uh, fourth down and 13 play where Perry was uh, in a bit of a scramble. Then he's found uh, R.J. Latondre. Big thing was the presence of mind here. He really waited on it very well as R.J. just crossed the field. As we mentioned, he took a long time and he just gets back the. Uh, it took a long time to get over into that spot, and then eventually he just got back past the defense and took it home. That baby was right on the hands. Stand by. Keep talking. Plymouth State added another touchdown and then a field goal a little bit later on. They were knocking on the door toward the end of that first half, but they couldn't punch it in. They had a first and 10 from the 12, and they never really got uh, closer than that. They ended up kicking the field goal. Came close. Sam Carey almost made the catch in the court of the end zone. He's out of, uh, he's a West High School product out of Manchester, actually a Central, I should say. Here's the uh, second touchdown. Bowman just uh, hurtling over the top. Air Bowman goes in. David Bowman has played very well, I thought, in the first half. Done a nice job moving the ball up and down the field. Set the tempo for the offense with his running. So there you have it, the two touchdowns, and then the field goal we mentioned to close out the first half. 16-0 to score. Plymouth State Panthers over the Riverhawks from UMass Lowell. We'll have second half action after this. Do you think we've changed? I mean, the money. Do you think it's changed us? Well, I guess we're a little more secure. We've got less to worry about. We have more time to spend with the kids. 
I still play, you know. Every week. You don't actually think you could ever hit the number again, do you? I never thought I could hit the number in the first place. I'm here to see Sterling Sharp, please. Your name, please? Name. Hey! Now, let me tell you a little about Sterling before we meet him. He's a strong man, man. Sterling's like a freight train with stick him. <laughs> Sterling, you remember me. I work with you. You okay, man? Like a freight train, man. Shoot you. Shoot you, baby. When you're reaching for the gold, when you're playing to win it all, you play like there's no tomorrow. The 1994 NCAA Division I Field Hockey Championship is coming to Parsons Field in Boston, November 19th and 20th, and tickets are available now. To reserve your seats, call 617-373-4458. That's 617-373-4458. The ECAC Game of the Week is brought to you by the Chevy dealers of New England, start where more people end up, and by the Spalding Top Flight J5V, the offensive weapon. Scott Tranch Fontaine and Dave Long back here at Courier Field, Plymouth State College, and the stats really tell the story, Dave. Big number is the passing. That's the one that jumps out. 185 yards passing for Plymouth, no yards passing for Lowell which gives Plymouth a huge 283-yard to 63-yard total offense advantage over the, the Riverhawks. Harris on the return, gets to the 25, and that is it. Another thing that jumps out, Scott, is penalties. Eight penalties for 62 yards for uh, the Panthers, five for 48 against uh, Lowell, and that is a, uh, that's a big number for both teams. And, of course, the other number, everything else is pretty much even. Uh, other than the squad, I shouldn't say that, 14 to 6 first downs. Plymouth has the edge. And, of course, they lead it 16 nothing. First down and 10 from the 26. And the Riverhawks stay uh, on the ground. The one uh, pass that they completed in the first half was called back on a penalty. Well, it'll be interesting now. They're down by, uh, you know, they need three scores. The Actually, they need two scores and two two-point conversions to be able to get back to a tie. How are they going to do that? I think the first thing coming out of the locker room, they've got to try to establish and see if they can get it playing their ball control kind of a game. But as it progresses and goes along, sooner or later, they're going to have to throw the ball if they can't make a dent with the running game. And they didn't make much of a dent there on second down. And, uh, you know, it might be on first down, Scott, that they might want to try some of that fancy stuff or not, not just the quick hitter. Maybe that's where they want to go to a reverse or something like that. Again, as I mentioned in the first half, I think it's very important, given the, the difficulty that they have with the passing game, to gain a lot of yards on first down. Maybe first down is the down you try those short ball control passes on the rollout and things like that. Third and seven, and Boudreaux rolling. And he had Harris. He waited for us. Harris was open on the other side of the numbers on the field where the 40 was or the 30. And uh, Boudreaux just kind of waited. And by the time he threw the ball, Harris had nowhere to go. He was pinned on the sideline. So back to punt for... The Riverhawks is Crowley and Andy Levine, who's had a bit of an adventure today for Plymouth State. Not a good punt from Crowley. Levine at his 40. Levine cuts outside. And he's cut down after he gets across midfield. Plymouth State with great field position to start this second half. Supernet made a nice job. The defender, I mean, I'm sorry, the offensive player blocker for, uh, for the Panthers had had a, a defender, Reyes, sized up, but Reyes turned at the last second. He pulled up. Usually your body will take you forward. That would have been a clip, and it was a good presence of mind on the part of, of uh, Supernet to not throw the block. First and 10 from the 47. Perry, quick pass. Too much for Dalton, and he got hit pretty hard for his efforts. He had a linebacker influence that pass. Uh, looked like Dalton had some room if he got the ball. 
And once again, the cushion was there, so they're looking to see if they can exploit that. Coaches might have seen that. Now, that might have been one of the things they talked about in the first half. Try some of those quick hitters, especially the Latendre, who's got, you know, if he gets the ball, he's such a good runner. If he gets it, you know, about three or four yards off the line of scrimmage with that kind of uh, distance between him and the defender, defending defensive back, you know, he could go a long way, pick up some good yardage. Second down and 10. Redburn. Lots of lateral uh, motion there. He picked up about three, and then he was pushed to the side. And not anything real fancy. You've seen that play several times. They just tried to take it over the right tackle. And uh, the right guard, Sawicki. And Pagorni. And uh, they just tried to push it up. Probably just a three-yard gain. But they have the options here. As we've seen them throw the ball. Especially check the cushion once again. The uh, defensive back, the cornerbacks, is the clock. I guess there's a timeout right there. Some confusion on the part of the Penman. Defensive backs are lined up eight yards, I'm sorry, about five yards behind where the first down is. Quick button hook, you know, before the defender can close, one of those timing passes, nothing they're gonna do as long as the, as long as the Panthers catch it. And you look at R.J. Latondre's yards, 129 yards receiving in that first half alone on five care, uh, five catches. No relation to Irving Fryer, by the way, after that game he had against the Patriots, but pretty darn close. Of course, he had the long touchdown pass, and then he had the short pass at, that uh, resulted in the long run and gain. He had the 36-yard catch for the touchdown, but you know, you, you're looking at uh, well over uh, 25, somewhere between 25 and 30 yards a catch yeah, well, on had, average. He had that other one. In fact, I'm kind of surprised. I thought that, that was uh, the catch and run was longer. It seemed like it was longer than 36 yards. So we're going to challenge those stats. Big third down and five here for the Panthers. They're going with one back set. And the pitch to Redburn. Gonna He's Redburn going to be close. Yeah. Take a look at next week's next week game in a second. But uh, if anybody in the audience is interested in getting the tape of today's game, there's the address and phone number. Maybe make a nice Christmas present for people who are watching the game. Christmas, after all, is coming in a couple of months, I think. Not that I do my Christmas shopping that early. But you do do your Christmas shopping uh, through the TV, don't you? Yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna give it a shot. That and the catalogs. QVC. And he did pick up that first down. Hutchins, the big fullback, rumbling his way up near the 26-yard uh, line. Next week, we're going to be in Springfield, Massachusetts, as American International takes on Ithaca, longtime power division three, Ithaca. And it comes into New England for a game. And we'll see Plymouth State uh, down the road uh, relatively shortly as well. Two weeks. Game against Maine Maritime. Had a great runner, Rob Marchitello. They played with ECAC Division Three Northeast Champs last year. Marchitello, uh, backup tailback, came in and ran for 200 yards, six straight weeks. He's a terrific player. Second down and short. Perry rolling out. He'll keep it himself. He had to get uh, down to the 24. He's got it. Nice job. Almost, I think, that that was designed to do it that way. Uh, he went out there, no one was there, almost somewhat of a naked bootleg, and I think he had the option with one receiver who's going to throw, took the defensive backs out farther down, down the field, the which uh, gave him a bit of a cushion, and he took it up for the first down. Joel Perry out of Fairhaven, Vermont. Where is Fairhaven? I was just thinking that myself. Latondre and Dalton split out wide to the left side, and uh, Redburn gets the call. No, that's Ronner. That's Mike Ronner sweeping around the end for a pretty decent pickup. I'll tell you, the backup fullback, nice job in that play. Really didn't look like he had a lot of room as he went around the corner and uh, showed some, uh, I thought, a pretty good burst of speed and then made it around the corner. He was tight to the line of scrimmage and then bolted up for a pretty decent game. Call it a five-yard pickup, second and five from just outside the 15. 12-13 to play in this third quarter here from Plymouth. Panthers well in command, 16-0, looking to add to that score here. Oh, watch the fullback, Mark. 
Hurry to pass. Has a man. Good catch. And a first down for, is that uh, Redburn? No, that's Ronner again. Back to Ronner. I like that goal. They're kind of a tag team. Redburn and Ronner. Ronner, nice catch. Look at it come out in the flat. It was designed this way. And he picks it almost off the ground, then trips himself, but regains to make the tackle. Nice job. Big, big thanks, of course, to the uh, Chevy dealers of New England. By the way, in two weeks, they're going to go for that truck or an automobile in really? the football toss. Kind of uh, kind of building a uh, anticipation for that particular let's go defense. event. Ronner gets the call on first and goal, and he gets inside the five. Now, Come on, Jerry! Um, is the contest going to be a little tougher? Are they still going to have the 15 yards through the uh, hole? I don't know. We're supposed to see Fred Medora is going to come up here and talk to us. but uh, 30 yards, I understand, is uh, Steve Bamford. 30 yards. Informs me here in the booth. I wonder if alumni quarterback will have to go out there and uh, throw the passes with that one. But, uh, How about alumni uh, Hall of Fame <laughs> basketball players who are now uh, budding broadcasters? <laughs> Second and goal for the Panthers from just inside the five. This is a big score. Lowell needs a save here, a stop here. They got to come away with a field goal because, again, you know, I don't want to harp on it, but uh, they have they have no yards passing at this point. 63 yards in the first half, and uh, they have got to come away with just three points to keep it a three-score game rather than a four-score game. Then it becomes a real tough situation to come back from. Here's the uh, Plymouth homecoming faithful. Those penalties that you just saw there drive coaches absolutely nuts when you've got uh, second and goal from the five and you get a five yard motion penalty and all of a sudden you're back at the ten. Makes the wide receivers happy though. They got yeah, a better shot at catching the pass for a touchdown. <laughs> Perry to throw. Has he Hutchins. Five. Touchdown. That is the score and I'll tell you what, that was a nice job on the part of Perry. The play was designed to go to the tight end. Brian Doyle, take a look at this. Doyle is gonna is gonna do a down and out about an eight-yard play as he goes into the end zone. He's in the right-hand side of his screen, number 83. He's covered, so he goes to the secondary receiver. Perry does to Hutchins, who's right there, and he just puts his head down for the contact. And uh, I think it was Burns underneath that pile. No, it was Encanarso. Couldn't get him up high enough in a situation like that. You got to tackle him high to stand him straight up, and he hit him in the legs and he went forward. But uh, give. Perry. That was boom, wasn't it, for the extra point? That one uh, hit the T-shirt stand over by the tunnel. Hit the Fred Medor sign. <laughs> Fred's got them all strategically placed right there. Take another look at that from the uh, backfield camera. Watch, there's the wing back. I believe that's right there, 45 on the right. Hutchins, who goes out and just goes in the lower right hand flat. And uh, there in the middle of the screen is 83, the original defender, but they were th uh, the option passer. But there were three white shirts around him, so he goes to Hutchins, who takes it in. Number three, Kyle Nine plays on that drive, and it chewed up a little over three minutes for the Plymouth State Panthers. And now they're in a real comfortable position at 23 to nothing with 10.40 to play. In this third quarter. Steve Bamford joining us now in the booth. Steve, the uh, athletic director here at Plymouth State. How you doing? Well, it's... Uh, I'm doing a lot better now that we scored that third touchdown. Another short kick fielded by Piumjan, and he's taken down near the 35. Great day all around. You've got great weather. You've got uh, homecoming, big crowd. Everybody's happy. Well, everybody's done a heck of a job in putting this, uh, this day of activities together, Scott, and uh, we certainly are uh, very appreciative of the weatherman as well. Number nine, Ed Piumjan, with a 16-yard return. First down, UMass Lowell will start first and 10 from their 36. Yet to really generate any sustained offense in this game. Harris gets the call on first down, spins his way for about three. Talk about the program overall, Steve. You've had so much success here in uh, recent years. Is, uh, you must be pleased, the, the whole uh, community here, the, the Plymouth State Nation uh, as it uh, is, uh, must be extremely pleased and proud about their team. Well, they are, Scott, and I can tell you that uh, everybody from uh, the president on down has given us great support, financially and otherwise, to uh, operate what we think is one of the, the premier programs in Division Three in the country. 
Well, you certainly are with the uh, string of uh, conference championships that have been able to put together over the last uh, several years. And I would assume that this year they're looking uh, for another one. Well, we certainly are. That's our first goal. And then uh, anything that happens beyond that uh, is gravy on the mashed potatoes. Big third down play here. Loose ball. Who's got it? Lots of green jerseys over there. Plymouth ball. That's just how you draw it up uh, on homecoming. They bounce your way. Let's see if we can uh, figure out who pounced on this football here. Harris never really had uh, good opportunity at gathering in that pitch. It was a poor pitch. And uh, for Plymouth, it looked like Toby Thudier. Yeah, Toby is a senior, and he's the, one of the co-captains. He's the captain of the defensive unit. Does a great job. He plays out of the middle linebacker spot. And Toby, of course, all a defensive player, all Freedom of Conference defensive player last week. Perry looking for it all again. It's caught. Touchdown, R.J. Latondre. And that's what he does so well. Just got his feet inside the end zone line and was able to make that reception. Talk about striking back quickly. Don Brown goes right to the air. Has Perry looking for Latondre deep in the end zone, and that's about as deep as you can get. Let's watch those feet if we can. You have to give a lot of credit to RJ on this one because he, he knew where the end zone end line was, got his feet down just in time and dragged the back one. It's a good thing he did. Panthers now uh, opening up a sizable lead. And the extra point is up and good. Let's take a break from Courier Field here at Plymouth State on the ECAC Game of the Week. Steve, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Scott. My pleasure. Always nice to see you. Steve Bamford, the athletic director here at Plymouth State College, and he's happy. Everyone here at Plymouth State is happy. They're leading 30 to nothing. We'll be back after this. What do NASCAR North, the Pennsylvania Monastery, the Erie Canal, the New Hampshire Broadcasters Association, and an Ohio computer software company all have in common? They've joined the ever-expanding list of satisfied clients who've turned to Creative Video for their television production projects. Learn what they've discovered for quality, cost-effective television production services from concept to completion. It's Creative Video Incorporated. Among the highest awards for quality in the world is the Deming Award. Very few manufacturers have ever won one. Rico has two of them. In fact, Rico copiers and fax machines have won every major award for copier and fax quality. So we don't just have a reputation for excellence. We have proof. The name to know, Rico. And the sun is shining brightly here at Plymouth State. Certainly on the Panther fans who are very pleased with their team's a 30 to nothing showing thus far. They faked me out on that one. <laughs> that one has got, you know what that does? It, 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 it makes out the broadcast is what it does. Well, it also, I think, lulls for the time when they're going to do it. It's going to lull everybody to sleep. This is uh, Kayumjian's fifth return of the game on kickoffs, and he's the up man. Pretty decent return. There is a flag on the play as Kayumjian get up near midfield. Close to a late hit as he went out of bounds as well. Ellen Weinberg is uh, down on the field. Ellen, go ahead. When cornerback Andy Levine was looking to come to Plymouth State, he wasn't the only Levine looking to come to Plymouth State. His high school football coach, who happened to be his father, was also looking at Plymouth State. And he came along with him three years ago. Hey, it's one way to watch your son play football. Back upstairs to you guys. Yeah, that's not usually when your father's a football coach. He doesn't get, you, get, doesn't get to see you play on Saturdays when you're a football player. And uh, his dad is the offensive, uh, the quarterback coach, former coach at West High, and another Manchester guy, Bedford, actually. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, UMass. UMass uh, suffered on that penalty on the return. Brings it all the way back inside the 20. Yeah, on the clip. And the, it's too bad because the clip came after Comugin was by the, the uh, defense. The necessary block. That's the first completion of the game for Boudreau. Not much of a game. He hit uh, Dana Maxwell, but he only picked up a couple. First time we've heard Jeff Jarry's name, a right-hand linebacker. Makes the tackle. 
And right there, they are started to change things a little bit. That's the first time they've passed on first down. Maxwell gets the call on the ground this time. How do you like that play calling, though, Dave, on the, uh, after the fumble, first play from scrimmage, Perry goes long to LaTondre. Kind of, uh, I think it, ch it crossed them up a little bit. They've got, the, they've got RJ deep, but, um, you know, pretty much they've stayed on the ground in first down situation. So, you know, that's a dagger kind of a play. 30 nothing is going to be, uh, you know, I, I think Lowell's going to have to start throwing the ball almost every time. Boudreau rolling, pitches to Maxwell, and he just lost his footing. That's too bad, because he would have had the first down. I don't know, did Mason get him with his just on the on the foot as he was going by? Because right. I tell you what, he had all, as you said, they had all kinds of room. Easily had the first down. No one was going to get to him until he hit the, about the 35. Maybe we'll get a better look on the replay, but I thought uh, he just tripped up on the turf. Crowley to punt from his 10, and another whistle. And I think it was the clock. Yeah, too much time. That and the clock wasn't working. One or the other, because it's on 25. It should be on zero. Yeah, it should be counting down. Well, doesn't it reset as soon as it hits zero? Well, I'm not real mechanically inclined, <laughs> so I really can't say. <laughs> well, there was no flag, so apparently it was a malfunctioning clock. Yeah, I, I think it would have been at zero. That mystery is solved. And Crowley, kind of a wobbly punt. Takes a good bounce for UMass Lowell, a very good bounce. Down near the 22. Wow. Levine that thing just hit sprinted on, away from that thing. That thing hit on the 40-yard line and came to rest on the 20. There was a flag on the play. Good hands. And uh, having a catch with the Plymouth State College mascot. Penalty flag on the play. It looks like it's going to be declined. So the Panthers with the 30 to nothing lead will start first and 10 from their 22. Interesting to see when uh, the Panthers, long way to go with 736. When and if they're going to start bringing some new people in. I think it's probably a little bit too early. And I can see Latendre and Dalton coming into the game. Redburn in the backfield. And there is Joel Perry. So they're going to stay with the first unit for a little bit more. First down, from the State College. Let's go, James. Well, the penalty backs them all the way up to their 11-yard uh, line. Come in with no huddle. On the pitch, around the end. Redburn, the ball carrier. Redburn. Got himself some breathing room. He's up uh, past the 15. Good push by the right-hand side of the line. They had the, they had the tight end on that side of the ball, or that, that side, side of the guard, field, and they just tried to five. power them to pick up some distance, give them some daylight between them and the goal line. Would expect to probably be a bit conservative here because you don't want to uh, make a mistake, give Lowell a shot to uh, pick up an easy score. Second and six from their 16. Similar play, the pitch to Redburn around the end, and he's dancing along the sideline. I think he's got the first down before he stepped out. Yeah, you could tell. That was one of those things where he was only going to go out by a half an inch. Once again, tight end to the right-hand side of the field. They had two wide outs to the left, and they're just going to try and get the push and see if they can get out into that flat area, use Redburn's speed. And he walks the tightrope for a little while, picks up the first down. They move the chains up. Had a couple of big runs, two over 30-yard touchdown runs. And one, I'll tell you, started left, went to the middle, went back to left, and wheel wound up in the right-hand corner of the end zone last week. Here's Runner. They like that side on this drive. They keep going uh, around the right end. Rauner is a guy they really did not expect to become the player he has become. Very uh, has dramatic improvement, hard worker, and really an overachiever, at least what the coaching staff thought. So he is a nice story here for the Panthers. Come on now. 
Second down and four for the Panthers. Staying on the ground, Redburn. Get the first down and more. He's up near midfield. And that is the play that went for the touchdown, the two touchdowns last week. Starts left. And what they do is they start him. Take a look at the replay. Look at how far he starts. He's so far back, he's out of the picture. But they give him the ball deep in the backfield and let him make the choices. He sees it's right off the left-hand tackle, right off the left side of the left tackle, and he takes it up and then cuts back against the grain. Very difficult. Obviously, if you can see the field, you see people coming at you, and you can run against the grain, you're letting their momentum take, you out of, take them out of the play. Here's Ronner. He's got about nine yards. And you can see maybe the toll, the bigger offensive line in the part of the Pl Plymouth State is starting to take its toll on that defensive line of Lowell. They're just pushing him back on first down with some big gains. Comes up short. Once again, pushing people back. Big hole. And Warner is tackled once he gets into the secondary. Second and one from the 43. Panther is marching again. And we got a flag. Brandon Horrigan uh, came up out of his set, was somewhat confused, and he's going to get penalized for it. Don, good old Don Brown looking a little bit, I can't say he looks happy, but he looks, uh, he's, still, he's, got his, he's still focused on the game, obviously. Less agitated than yeah, that's a good way to say second it. Uh, quarter. Didn't like the... Uh, the call and roughing the kicker. We'll be handing out to Oscars after the game. Second and six. Sean Redburn makes his move, gets around the corner. And another first down for Sean Redburn and the Panthers. Tell you, Redburn reminds me of a guy who, uh, probably the symbol of Plymouth State College football, Joe Dudek, other than Gail Sayers, my favorite player to watch ever in a football uniform, but watch it when they give the red burn. He's got very similar moves. He goes into the line, and uh, he sees it. Now he uses a little bit of a move and the acceleration to get around. The defender just couldn't get there, and he beats it around. There's nobody to turn the play inside, so he's got a lot of room. But that's what Dudek would do. Joe, who uh, finished ninth in the Heisman Trophy balloting, thanks to Rick Riley saying he was the thinking man's choice, as Perry takes it upfield. Another flag. But uh, Joe would uh, run deep. They'd give him the ball deep in the backfield, and they'd get him moving in one direction. They'd let him see the field and look for the hole. And then when he saw it, he had the ability to cut and accelerate and, and run against the grain. He did that exceptionally well in the open field, and that's something Redburn does. So I see some similarities between those two. There's a good look on the side there of a Don Tappan, big defensive tackle, 6'2", 270. Very experienced team. That is the big difference in these two teams. Lowell, as we said, has got 48 freshmen on the team as they are retooling. Holding against the Panthers will drive them back a bit. Tom Radulski in his second year, 5-5 five and five a year ago. Last year, the uh, UMass Lowell uh, squad gave Plymouth quite a game. Well, I tell you, they've had some very good games. Last year, I think it was 23-21. It was 20-22 years ago. We did the game. In fact, that's the first game we've ever done in the ECAC game of the week. And then uh, Plymouth won the year before that. And then there was a shootout down in Lowell about 1990 that was just great. Matt Jizokas from Plymouth threw for 400 yards. Lowell scored a big touchdown and made an interception on the last play of the game in the end zone after Plymouth had drove 90 yards for what looked like the winning score. Just a tremendous game. Dan Abraham, the freshman, got the call that time. As uh, Coach Brown starts to work in some of his second and third stringers. Always nice to, to get a chance to play on, uh, on homecoming in front of the big crowd. Hurry back to the air, complete. Latondre, I gotta believe he's uh, close to 200 yards receiving today with that last uh, big touchdown catch. And I'll tell you, now see, he has earned the cushion now. You know, I was uh, kind of going on and on before about the big cushion that they were giving or the pad. He had about 10, 12, even 15 yards and sometimes, but after he beat him deep, 
a couple of times and showed his speed. Um, now he's going to pull up and take advantage of that. Eight yards in that play as they're coming back from where they started first and 20, but picked up eight yards just in a simple turnaround pattern. Third and 11. Latondre and Dalton both uh, on the left, and Perry is looking downfield. First time they've got to him, he fumbled. Loose ball. And I think some heads up uh, play by a Plymouth State player recovered that fumble, but a, an important sack nonetheless for the River Hawks. I think Jeff Ziegler got it, the right tackle. Perry with some room, but the coverage was excellent downfield in the part of Lowell. He's looking for Latondre down there in the middle of the field, but here comes the Lowell defense that put the pressure on. on the part of the State. Nice job in the penetration on that defensive line. It was uh, Merska made the tackle. And a pretty decent punt. Skirts out of bounds at the 15 is Paul Descoli. Kind of hits the ball. For over 50 years, the Eastern College Athletic Conference has assured its membership of the highest level of organization and competition in collegiate athletics. The ECAC is the largest athletic conference in the NCAA, representing about 25% of its members. Comprised of 256 colleges and universities, encompassing divisions one, two, and three, the ECAC is a conference of conferences, including the Ivy League, the Big East, the East Coast Conference, and numerous other conferences in all divisions. This is an exact replica of Jack Murphy Stadium. This is where Junior Seau slashes, tackles, hits, and runs. Hey, man, look where you're going. You just ruined my stadium, man, and it was perfect, perfect, and you ruined. You got a problem? That's Junior Seau. No, 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 whatever you say, Junior. Are you okay? No, no, no. I got to go now. That's Junior Seau's footprint, man. Live action, Dana Boudreau doing what he does best. He's better running the ball than throwing it, and that time he picked up the first down. Yeah, he made the good choice. He really he faked that he was going to go to the wide guy. The defensive player reacted to it, and then he just stepped inside, moved it up the field. On first down, that's... Uh, Kuyumjin. I think to a certain extent, Scott, you're seeing a, uh, I don't know, a, a concession on the part of the coaching staff in that thinking that they're down by 30. They don't pass the ball very well. The team has, has, has struggled offensively in the last couple of games, and they've got a, young, a lot of young people on the field. So what it looks like they're going to do is they're going to stick with their game plan and try and work on the execution at that point and say, well, I don't think we can make up 30 points with our passing game. So let's work on what we need to do for the next game and as we go on through the season. This is Jason Harris, and we were talking about Joe Dudek a little bit earlier. Ellen Weinberg on the sideline with Joe. Ellen? With me, I have Joe Dudak, the greatest football player ever to play at Plymouth State. He still, to this day, holds the record in all divisions, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, for the most touchdowns in a career with 79. Um, he, w he went through two undefeated seasons. This team thus far is undefeated. How do you feel about this? I tell you, I'm really excited because it's nice to come back into homecoming and to see that the, tra the tradition is kept alive. I mean, these guys here, they go out and they're playing, they're winning. I was a little concerned about today because I thought there'd be a letdown after beating Norwich, but they've come out 30 to nothing. So far, so good. Now he's going to kill me for this. I pulled this out of the football office. Tell us what it is. That's, that's the story of my life right there. Um, <laughs> you know, being from Division Three, you don't get a lot of recognition. And, uh, you know, Sports Illustrated, thanks to them, I was able to, to be a, a public figure, uh, basically. I mean, this is my whole life. Uh, I'm known for this cover, and uh, it's something I'll never forget and something I can show the kids someday. Great. On that note, I'll let him get back to his friends and his wife and enjoy the rest of this game. Back upstairs thank to you Thank you, Ellen, and thank you, Joey. Looks great, doesn't he, Dave? I tell you, he was. Yeah, he does look great. Uh, uh, he was a terrific football player. Although Ellen was saying, <laughs> he still holds the record. <laughs> like he, he was with John Garner in 1945. Although, interestingly enough, John Garner, who is uh, the assistant commissioner of the ECAC, was the sports information director in uh, at Plymouth when Joe was here, and was very instrumental in the whole publicity role that got going that uh, wound up with Joe on the cover 
Rick Riley wrote the story in Sports Illustrated called The Thinking Man's Vote for the Heisman. And I'll tell you what, I, I don't think he was that far off base. I mean, Auburn, they only went on probation for three more years when Bo was there. And so I think it was pretty good. It was a great story when that happened here. I mean, the attention that was circled around it in the game that Joe had a chance to break that record. He didn't. He only needed, I think, a touchdown or two. He didn't do that. He, he racked up about 265 yeah. yards on the ground and five touchdowns. Yeah. He did it in style. So, uh, I mean, he was a terrific football player. Maxwell recovered his own fumble. And really played a role. It's interesting. The admissions office saw from all that uh, attention that was focused coming out of the football program, they saw uh, uh, like about a 10% or 15% jump in people who wanted to come here because they knew about it. So it played a, a positive role in, in the whole uh, uh, admissions element of the school. And it's like Steve Bamford was saying uh, earlier, you build up that winning tradition of the program here, and it does wonders uh, for the whole community, the whole uh, uh, college and the whole uh, Plymouth State Nation. Yeah, that's really where it started. I mean, Joe came in, I think Joe came in like 1982, around 1980. The school, the program only started like 10 years earlier, like 70 or 71, 71, I believe. And, uh, you know, they steadily got better, but right around 79, 80, uh, they started to become a team that was uh, to be reckoned with. Joe came in right after that, and they became dominant, and then they won 10 years in a row, their conference. So uh, it was like, to a certain extent, we... Uh, it was like Lou Alcindor when he went to UCLA. All of a sudden, UCLA just kept getting player after player after player, and uh, they were great for a long time. That's the end of the third quarter here at Plymouth State, and the Panthers well in command, 30 to nothing. When you're reaching for the goal, when you're playing to win it all, you play like there's no tomorrow. The 1994 NCAA Division I Field Hockey Championship is coming to Parsons Field in Boston November 19th and 20th, and tickets are available now. To reserve your seats, call 617-373-4458. That's 617-373-4458. What you doing, Mr. Garrett? Oh, hi, Tommy. I'm changing my oil and air filters. What's W-I-X? That's Wix. Wix makes my filters. What are filters? Well, filters keep dirt out of my engine, and Wix filters are the best. Matter of fact, I had them on the car I uh, won the Daytona 500 in. I see my frog. Get your Wix filter at any SAS Santa Auto Parts store. <laughs> 15 minutes to play here at Plymouth State, uh, here in Plymouth, New Hampshire. And if you're with the UMass uh, Lowell squad, you're looking at uh, losing 23 to nothing last week, losing 25 to nothing uh, two weeks ago. You're losing 30 to nothing here. You just want to get some points on the board. This is the best football team they've played against, though. Boudreaux's in trouble. Yeah. Going to the air. In and out of the hands of his receiver, David Medrano. And yeah, Medrano was open, but the ball was behind him. He just tried to stop and turn back and grab it, couldn't do it. That's the difficulty in this kind of an offense. You're passing. Boudreaux was running against the grain, and he had to turn his body back to be able to get the right shoulder back in position to throw the ball because it was nearest to the line of scrimmage, and that's a very tough thing to do for anybody. Second down and nine. That was a nice play. There. But I'll tell you what, Tappan makes the play, but Harris had lots of room. Harris, the they had faked here. everybody out but Tappan. He happened to be at the line of scrimmage. But if he gets by Big Don, I'm telling you, he's going down at least inside the 10-yard line. Loss of three yards, third down and 13. Loss of three on the play, so third and 13. And Boudreaux will keep it himself. Got a few, but not nearly enough. He's up near the 20. So I think they're going to go for it. On, they got to go for it on fourth down. Well, it'll be a fourth down and about 10. And I think the decision has been made. They will indeed go for it here, and why not? You're down 30 to nothing with 13.50 to play in the ball game. You've been shut out in your previous two games. 
What have we got to lose? Boudreaux rolling, throwing, complete. Kayumjin doesn't have enough. He was knocked out of bounds at about the 13 yard line, so pretty good play. Just wasn't enough. He needed to get uh, inside the 11. And UMass Lowell will turn it over on downs. Pretty good drive, though. I mean, they moved the ball. Here's another look at it. Boudreaux just rolling, and Kayumjin kind of releasing in the flat there. And good defense by Plymouth. They knew they had to hold him to under 10 yards, and they only gave him nine. And Levine with the nice tackle. He took him out in the leg. But it almost, I think, hurt Kayumjin not to go down. Because if he just dives, maybe he picks up the first down if when he gets his legs cut out. Easy to say it from up here, though. Pitch play. Here's Redburn. Redburn Starting to see more Redburn. I think Bowman might be done for the day. He was the leading ground gainer when he had. Had a pretty good job. Did a, uh, probably over about 80 yards. Don't have the official. 63 at halftime. David played well. Good tandem and tailbacks that they have. Well, the thing Plymouth. about Bowman is that uh, he helped them establish early on in that first drive uh, a good ground game, and then Perry started to open it up. And I tell you, it's a luxury for a coach to have two running backs like that because you can avoid the tailback getting tired. Redburn, the ball carrier. Redburn again on second down. And of course, there's people who might argue with that who will say uh, some guys get much stronger as you go along, and they want the ball, they want the ball. Bowman's got the big body he's the kind of guy it looks like he can take a lot of punishment and keep going wear teams down but uh, I can remember uh, SMU early 80s it must have been the early 80s when they had uh, the Pony Express Eric Dickerson at run back Craig, Craig James Craig they used James. to alternate on plays Third down play there and a first down for Ronner. And I think they both got over 1,000 yards. I know Dickerson got 1,000 yards. Mm. Can you imagine having a backfield where Ronner, Dickerson Ronner doesn't Ronner. play every down when he's in college? He was in a worse backfield than the pros. <laughs> Craig James had a few decent years with the Patriots, and now he's uh, doing what we do. Not quite as well, but he's still <laughs> Are You tell him that. Making a little bit more money at it, though. <laughs> No, actually, he's uh, he's very he's done a nice job. I thought he was an agent. I mean, he might still be an agent. I don't know. He's working for an agent out of uh, Dallas there for a while. Mm. Yeah, he had the big year, thousand yards the year they went to the Super Bowl. And uh, the Patriots may be going back there this year. You subscribe to that theory? Absolutely. <laughs> what I say on uh, I said eight and eight beginning yeah. of the year. I'm committed to that. And I think that's. A pretty good finish for them if they do that. I think it's going to let people down. There's a lot of the, the uh, expectations and hopes are so high. The bandwagon has cranked up, has it not? Yeah. Uh, everybody was jumping off when they went 0-2 <laughs> and, and lost to, I think, two pretty good football teams. No, I think everyone kind of cut them some slack because those were two games that they really uh, should have and or at least could have won. You, you think that they should have won at least one of those. Probably. I mean, if you're going to give the should have, maybe the Miami game and then yeah. the could have was against Buffalo. Pitch play to Dan Abraham, the freshman, seeing some quality action here. Took a quality hit over by the sideline. And you can tell with the Abraham white pants. The it's his first carry of the game. Yeah, but the thing about the Patriots, you, I mean, have you looked at the standings, or has anybody looked at the standings? Dolphins 3-1, oh, and, mm. and the Bills, I believe, are 3-1 and one as well. Three, second and, down uh, seven. Playing without Thurman this weekend. Yeah, they're winning a little ugly against Houston, but... Uh, you know, people are looking past Buffalo. Those guys are still good players. So, you know, those losses, although they were losses, are not that bad. I think this week is a good test with the Packers. Second down and seven for the Panthers. Abraham again. He's got some room. Dan Abraham with the first down over the 40. Okay, maybe they're going to go with Bowman on first down, Redburn on second down, and Abraham on third down. And Martin and John on fourth and fifth down, right? <laughs> Talking about standings, there's Plymouth State leading the charge. UCAC uh, New England Division Three football. Well, good teams on that. Uh, I don't think we're going to see uh, a drop in the polls this week in, uh, in terms of Plymouth being number one. It'd be hard to knock them down after this performance. And we have Williams coming up in a couple of weeks. They take on Tufts. 
Abraham running laterally. Good speed for this young freshman. Pushed out of bounds up near the 48. Come on, D. 10-22 left in this one, 30 to nothing to score, Plymouth State. Name of the game here, sorry Scott, name of the game here is just keep it on the ground, grind away, take time off the clock. That's the big enemy for Lowell right now. Are you surprised that Joel Perry is still in there? A little bit, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this was his last set of downs. Remember Joel Perry just playing in his first year, third Abraham. game. Abraham riding the wave there. <laughs> kind of jumped up on the back of his blockers and just rode him for the first down. They do the wave in football. <laughs> they did then. I've never seen it on the field Abraham before. I've seen it carrier. in the stands. Looked like he was body surfing there for the uh, extra yardage that he needed to get to the first down. Now that's a pretty good idea. They don't know who to tackle. You know, you jump on guys back and let them carry you across, and they're tackling the wrong set of legs. Of course, you got to hold on to the ball while you're holding on to the guy you're... And there is the Moses Jean-Pierre, the basketball equivalent of Joe Dudek here at Plymouth State College. Over 2,000 points as a basketball player, terrific player. Uh-oh, fumble, Abraham can't hold on, and it's UMass football. UMass Lowell, number 67, Bill Alves, or Alves. And here it is, just a mishandle. Pitch goes, it's right there. He just drops it, Abraham. I don't know, he's probably looking for where the hole was going to be. And he loses it. And then there's the pile. There's Alves with the uh, kind of a snatch bringing it back in. Good job. Just ran right over the top of Alexander to get it. Alves, a freshman as well, but uh, 6'2", 294. A little bit larger than Abraham. Incomplete there as Boudreaux was looking downfield. Tough pass through into three guys. Only one receiver out on the pattern that time, though. Go, UMass Lowell, the Riverhawks, trying to get on the board here with 940 left. Trying to capitalize on uh, this turnover. Kayumjin is stacked up in the middle. Plymouth staying with the guys who got there. Got him there at this point. Haven't, you know, it's interesting in this game. There's a good shot of Ed. You know, it's interesting. We haven't really heard too much from the linebackers. Um, well, it's easy to see why the Plymouth State linebackers haven't been engaged. No, they, I think that's a testament to the front three yeah. of, the, of the Panthers. They've done a good job. They haven't had to to, do, to uh, been in on as many tackles, but you know the games we've done, uh, Colby Compton, I've said his name more than I've said the name of the school, it seems like, in past time. So uh, good job by the front three. Just a gain of one on that third down, so another punting situation for Eric Crowley. Here's my man Colby. Went to the same high school as his coach, Don Brown. Don't think it was the same year, though. Another rainmaker from Crowley. Levine calls for the fair catch. That was a good punt. That was a very good punt. Levine did the right thing. If he lets that go, maybe, maybe it makes it to the end zone, but I doubt it. Crowley with the uh, Ray Guy-like hang time today. We're still trying. I'm still working on a wide receiver <laughs> who, was, <laughs> who, was who also, also a was a punter. Okay, we've got Plymouth State's going to take over on first down. Going to go down to Ellen in a minute. She's got a surprise guest for us. And Abraham gets the call again. Ellen on the field. Ellen? With me, I have President of Plymouth State, Wharton. He's done something really unique here with the athletic program. He's taken a vested interest in it. He told the athletic director the other day that he wanted to meet with each team individually. Why did you do something like this? Well, I wanted to uh, get a chance to know the students better, and I also wanted to tell them how much we appreciate all their hard work on behalf of the college, and also uh, how well they represented us in front of the public. Now, you met with the football team yesterday. They were the first team. What did you tell them? Well, I told them again that how much we appreciated their work, 
I said that they were one of our most Flag visible representat representatives of the college. And I also told them there were a lot of lessons to be learned from, from football that would carry over into their lives. Well, you've got to be proud of the football team here today. Very much so. They're a great bunch of kids, and they've done wonderfully for us. Great. Thanks for taking the time. And back upstairs, back to the play with you guys. Don't see support like that. Got to like that if you're the football coach. <laughs> and when was the last time you saw a college president with the team hat on? That's the last time you saw a college president with a beard. And we've got Andy Jackson in the game. The answer to when was the last time you saw a quarterback punting? Andy, the starter last year, and uh, Joel Perry's come and won that job. But make no mistake about it, he's a good player. Abraham again with uh, good resiliency. Oh. <laughs> Finally paid for it at the end. <laughs> what a tackle. Vince Spinelli, he just picked him up and drove him back. Let's see if we can see that one on the replay. Watch it, Spinelli, the right-hand linebacker. After uh, about nine tackles are missed, Spinelli says, that's enough of that. F number 50 comes into your screen. Trailing, he says, okay, I'm going to pick him up and put him down. Hello. <laughs> little pile driver action there. That is the best. I'm not sure if that's the best hit of the day. The one on uh, Dalton on that pass in the seam was probably the biggest hit of the day by, uh, I believe it was Encanarso is the one who delivered it, but that was close. Back to Abraham around the end. He's getting lots of work here in this fourth quarter. And he got the first down. Abraham Showing some good here. promise. Check that. The big hit was by Reyes. That's who, uh, number 44, the big hit, and he just made the tackle there as well. Time ticking away. Gain of 10 yards, first down, Tennessee. You know, uh, if Lowell, I, I think it's important that Lowell gets a score here. Obviously, not from the standpoint of who's going to win or lose. But, you know, as the streak continues, this is the second game, third game in a row, they have not scored. They shut out in the two games before that. I think they really need a score to kind of pick up their confidence and, uh, you know, give them a sense so they can stay a little bit focused at the goal line. When you get in a situation like that and you're not. You know, you're having trouble getting it in the end zone or even putting it down the field. You have a tendency to worry about what you're doing wrong rather than the, what the things you need to do right. And it, and the uh, momentum is gained. The snowball rolls farther down the hill and gets bigger and bigger. Panthers have a second down and eight from their 27. Andy Jackson on the pitch play. Panthers keeping it simple right on the ground. That was Sean Lowell. I guess if you're a first year running back, your first name has got to be Sean here. <laughs> or as uh, Chris Berman had called him, Sean UMass Lowell. Well, he did some damage there. He picked up about uh, seven yards. It's a third and short. Nice job. Left hand side of that line just collapsed the defensive right hand side of Lowell and just pushed him back by the time. Sean Lowell got to the line of scrimmage. It was about five yards back. Five minutes to play on this third down and one, and there's some movement. I'm going to say it was the left guard. I'm not sure the number who's in the ball game now for uh, Plymouth is the guy who moved. Brian Arakelian. That'd be my guess out of Hampton, New Hampshire, but uh, I don't know. It looks like they're talking to Andy Jackson is down there talking to the officials. Just in from Kings Point in the third period. But they don't stop the play when Lowell does it, so it's got to be against the guys in green. What do you think the coaching staff's going to say to Plymouth in the films? What do you think the thing they'll they'll uh, point at that they need to work on most? Well, it won't be the uh, pass defense, that's for sure. Probably the only negative here is the number of penalties that they've picked up, especially early on. Yeah. But uh, of course, this is a different unit. This is the new unit that's in, and but uh, you know that's the only thing you really can point to that was uh, something that might hurt them in a, in a closer game. Jackson on the pitch. Lowell turns the corner. He's going to be close. We'll see where he skipped out of bounds. He had to get up to about the uh, 36. Here it comes. 
Not exactly a skip out of bounds, kind of like a look out for that bench. He might hit it, but good speed to elude the defender right there. That's the second one. He gets to the corner. Nice job and good pursuit on the play defensively by David Murphy, who uh, originally was beat, and then when Lowell turned it up, caught him from behind. Lowell just did get the first down, so Plymouth keeps the drive alive. First and 10 from their 36. How can Lowell get the first down if Plymouth's got the ball? <laughs> Fumble, this is loose gonna, ball, and Jackson falls on it. It's going to get confusing here. I'm not falling for that bait. <laughs> I refuse. I know, but somebody out there and watching could say, how's Lowell getting the first down when, they've got, when they don't have the ball, when they're on defense? Jackson did recover that fumble and lost just a couple yards, so second and 12. I mean, I have a tough enough time with just watching the game and calling it, but when they get throwing confusing things like that, can really mess you up. Are there any Plymouths that play for UMass? <laughs> I was just thinking that myself. Check, check your roster. I think there's a Dodge, though. No Plymouths. On the pitch. That's uh, number 32, Rob Cloutier. Out of Foxborough, Massachusetts. They're just running and running backs at us now. It's going to be a challenge. No relation to Toby. Cloutier. Or Leo. 320 left in this one from Charles L. Courier Memorial Field at Plymouth State. Panthers having their way with the Riverhawks today. They've got the 30 to nothing lead and they've got the ball at their 37. Cloutier again. Boy, he paid for that. He really was taken out of bounds. I think it was Joe Delisle. Number 18 just delivered the big blow as he went out of bounds. Linebacker, a lot of low numbers. You see a guy, you see an 18 make a tackle, and you're thinking, oh, he's got to be like a defensive back, 180, 190 pounds. <laughs> he's a linebacker, and you say he really paid the price to get that, get nailed by uh, Delisle. A couple of Cloutiers on the Plymouth squad. There's a Matt Cloutier playing for UMass Lowell today as well. We could feel the all Cloutier team. I think number 93, Inspector Cloutier. <laughs> <laughs> that one's going to bounce in their favor. Pretty decent uh, punt and a gutsy run back. Yeah. That's the only that. way to uh, describe that one. Ellen down on the field with a report on uh, injury. Ellen? I'll tell you, he missed about, there were about six missed tackles as he fought it off as he came up, but that we was swarmed in green shirts. I don't have a 32 in white on my roster, so I couldn't tell you who ran that ball back, but good run back nonetheless. Boudreau was rolling. Do what and I do. Incomplete. Do what I do, make, make it, up. it up. Must be a Cloutier, right? It work <laughs> yeah, it works great, though, when you're uh, doing radio because people can't follow that kind of a thing, but... Uh, that one was uh, Joe Cloutier. Tell you a funny story. First game we ever did here, Lowell was playing Plymouth, and uh, I think the score was nothing, nothing at the time. Plymouth punts the ball, and a guy catches the ball at about the 40-yard line, right in front of the Lowell bench, right before us. And uh, the guy picks up the ball and chucks it to the opposite side of the field to a guy who we don't know what his number is, don't know what his name is, and he runs for 60 yards for a touchdown. We're going, there he is, number 33. <laughs> Uh, we're told now that Ellen is ready. Ellen? Every team hates to lose a player, especially a starter. Defensive end Seamus Mason went down a few plays back. He hurt his knee. Talking to Dr. O'Neill, it's not too severe. They don't know the severity of it right now. He's back behind me, icing his knee. They're hoping um, that he won't be out for too many weeks. They call it a sprained medial collateral ligament. Back upstairs to you guys. Boy, you hate to hear those uh, words like medial collateral and in any kind of injury report, but Seamus was having himself a heck of a ball game today. And he is the new guy in the fearsome foursome, played a good ball game, and uh, there is another injury. That's Boudreaux. And uh, looks to me like it's... No, usually, I was going to say, it looks like you got you the wind knocked at him, but usually you don't hold your head like that. That's one where you're going to clinch your teeth on the injury, so. Let's try and pick it up here. He is just gonna go and decide to run the ball. He's gonna pass up 
the option pass and turns it in. And uh, I don't know, it looks like he holds his knee as he comes up. And it looked like a twist. Twist on the ankle of the knee. And yeah. Not the knees at all. Yeah. Not the knees, it's not the knees. The way is up, usually if you hurt your knee, you're not gonna roll over on your knee. So it's probably an ankle the way he's got it held up in the air. Which if you're an option quarterback is uh, yeah, when the you worst bet, you can get. Yeah, when you depend on those quick cuts and things, you really, you, know, you really need your ankles in a situation like that. So hopefully it is not too severe, but they are carrying him off the field. And it looks like the right ankle is the injured appendage. Well, that'll bring in Chuck Silva, the freshman. He's number three in white. We'll see what he can do with 2.27 to play in this one. Adam Mathune. Silva apparently an option quarterback as well. That time he opted to keep it. He took a pretty big hit. On third down and uh, with uh, two minutes to go. Lowell probably, wanna, probably gonna kick it. I don't think that's the uh, prudent thing to do yeah. at your 32. Yeah, plus no chance to uh, no chance to get back in the ball game trailing by 30 points. So why give Plymouth position like this so they can take it in for another touchdown? They are working on uh, Boudreaux's right ankle down on the bench as Crowley gets set to punt. Let's check his hang time on this one. That one, I like the distance on that one. Nice spiral that uh, good catch sends Abraham back to his 25. That was a good catch. That ball was going away from his body, and he just reached out with his hands and nice, soft, feathery hands, makes the play, and turns around and puts a good run back on it. Yeah, Ab Abraham shot straight up field through the wedge, and he got it up past the 40. Here's Paul Levine, Andy Levine's dad, quarterback coach for the Panthers. Look at that going away. Looks like he's a pass receiver yeah. going for the pass downfield. Looks like Latondre wide open for the touchdown. Right, and he's got to turn it around, does a nice job coming, bringing it back up the field. You gotta like what you see from these freshman uh, running backs, the uh, Dan Abrahams and Rob Cloutiers. They've done a nice job, Lowell. They've come in and looked good for Plymouth. It's like a human wave. They just keep bringing in new, new, uh, new tailback after tailback. The tailback factory here. That time the call goes to uh, Jeremy Durand, another freshman out of Wilder, Vermont. Everybody getting in the action today. One of the wilder places I've ever been in. If he runs it again, are they going to call it Duran Duran or what? Once again, next week, the game against Western Connecticut. I refuse. A minute left in this one, 30 to nothing, Plymouth State. You got to use your imagination when it's down by 30. <laughs> and the game is ticking away, but... Uh, Look at this formation. This is the formation to just run out the clock. And Jackson uh, put it down. Didn't want to get jumped on, so yeah. he got up right away and gave it back. Handle looked like he was giving it back to the tailback, gave it to the official instead. But I got to say, pretty impressive game on the part of the Panthers. Pretty tight effort on both sides. Defense did a nice job. And uh, offensively, the passing game looked good. Running game looked good. Pretty much what we expected there. Very well-balanced club. Strong running club. Obviously a strong passing club, as we saw today. And defensively. No real holes there. Yeah, and on the other side, you know, you're going to expect that. Lowell, again, we're talking about in the rebuilding. They're retooling the team. They've got 48 freshmen on the roster. And uh, the best thing you can say about a game like this is they need to play. And when you have that many guys, you know, who have need the experience, they just got to get it. And there's no way to get around getting a, a big loss put on them when they're playing a very good football team like Plymouth, which returned, I think, they have 22 starters, about 17 starters back. So... You know, that's pretty impressive. Well, unfortunately for UMass Lowell, in their last three games, they've scored zero points, and they've given up 78. The final score here from Plymouth, 30 to nothing. Panthers over the Riverhawks. Dave and I will be back to wrap it up after this. Some people are naturally faster than others. In fact, everything they do is fast. Fast, 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 fast. Now, not everyone appreciates that. But if you're looking to get a new GM car or truck financed, fast is exactly what you want. Mac will take care of your financing. And the folks who arrange GMAC financing and leasing are faster than just about anyone else. GMAC, the expressway home. You forgot your sunglasses. 
Last year, AMC helped raise over $250,000 for film preservation, but much still needs to be accomplished. The valiant effort continues with AMC's second annual Film Preservation Festival. For three days, AMC will present some of Hollywood's greatest movie treasures, all restored to their original splendor. Join Hollywood's stars and movie makers in the fight to save our film heritage. Don't miss AMC's second annual Film Preservation Festival, October 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Television, communication, perception, information, discussion, consultation, comprehension, connection, dissemination, duplication, promotion, cultivation, realization, revelation, exclamation, hesitation, hesitation, television production by a creative video. Yeah. You're on. 30 to nothing, the final score here at Plymouth State College here in Plymouth, New Hampshire, as the uh, Panthers run roughshod over the Riverhawks from UMass Lowell. Kind of what uh, a lot of us feared at the outset of this game, and really uh, the keys to the game never uh, really materialized for UMass Lowell. They never uh, were able to generate uh, much of an offensive uh, drive uh, consistently, and they never got uh, any key turnovers. Yeah, Plymouth did a good job of, of uh, executing, and they did not make the mistakes that uh, I think would have allowed Lowell to uh, to get a little bit closer or win, as we said. I, th I thought they needed a plus three in the, in the turnover situation, and they didn't get it. Well, let's go back to the uh, Chevy drive of the game, and Dave, you explain this one. We're going to take a little <laughs> license on this one here, as it's a one-play drive that goes for a bomb, and a touchdown came after a fumble, but uh, the play is such a pretty play and catch by R.J. Latendre off the pass from Perry, and R.J. just runs a fly down the field. And uh, I think they must call it the Chevy drive play. But look at the concentration. Watch the feet. Scott says he's out. I say he's in. There's one foot, and he drags the back one. College football, you only need one foot in bounds. So it is a beautiful catch on the part of R.J. Latendre. Scored twice. Also had the opening score, 36 yards. And that was the Chevy drive of the game. Yardage was there wasn't really a play wasn't it wasn't the typical uh, uh time consuming drive of a game that we or normally give out but such a pretty play had to do it there and uh, appropriate that uh, we focus on latandre in the post game because he had uh, close to 200 yards uh, in receiving and two big touchdown catches you just saw one of them but he had one earlier on in the first half which really got things rolling and uh, also he was the winner they give out an mvp they call it the jason holder award here in plymouth for mvp jason is the guy who got the ball going to uh, start football here at Plymouth State College, started as a club team, and then eventually became. And also, the, uh, they started off their first time anybody ever touched the ball in career, I mean, in football here in Plymouth. Guy ran it back, Alan Wall, ran it, ran it back for a touchdown on the opening kickoff. There's a look at some of the fine people who helped put this broadcast together today. Plymouth Panthers improved to 3-0 and uh, retained their first uh, place ranking in the Freedom Conference, and the UMass Lowell Riverhawks fall to 0 and 4. Could be a long season for them. And Dan Boudreau, their quarterback, went down with an ankle injury uh, late in the game. For Dave Long, I'm Scott Tranchmontane. Thanks for being with us on this ECAC Game of the Week. We'll see you next week in Springfield. <laughs>